Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself even more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as this story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself heading out of woodland at the top of a hill, leading down to the ocean below. As you head out of the woodland, you can hear the sound of the sea in the distance, while perhaps noticing the rustling of the leaves of the trees here in the woods, and the way the light dances as thin strips of light penetrate the canopy. As you manoeuvre past some of the trees to exit the woodland, you touch the bark of a tree, feeling the slight coolness of that rough bark, the way it feels under your fingertips and the palm of your hand, while pushing a branch out of your way with your other hand and arm to reveal the light of the hill and the unobstructed view down to the sea and off to the horizon. As you walk out of the woodland and into the meadow on this hill, you can find yourself walking through the tall grasses and wild flowers of the meadow, feeling the warmth of the sun on your cheeks. You can hear the sound of the sea below and notice the waving, almost pulsing movement of the grasses and flowers as the breeze blows across the meadow. Perhaps you can see the birds flying high overhead and hear the distant rustling of the trees of the woodland you've just passed through. You can notice the way that the hilltop rises and transforms into a cliff a little further along the coast where the hills seem to almost wrap around the incoming ocean where the hills have gotten steeper and steeper, and then, in places, the front of the hills has been eroded away by the sea, creating a cliff face. And a little way in the distance, along the cliff, is a lighthouse standing tall and strong. You watch for a moment, to see whether it has its light on. You see the faint pulse of light, perhaps surprised at how dim it seems when viewed during the daytime, but aware of the beam that it will project across the ocean when night falls. As you explore this meadow on a hillside, listening to the beach sounds in the background, really absorbing yourself in the experience and making the most of this experience. You can notice the way the sun is glistening and shimmering over the surface of the sea beyond the golden sand. From up here, you can see the shapes and regular patterns which are often invisible to those viewing the sea from the beach. You notice the straight rows of waves undulating gently towards the shore, and how those waves seem to be grouped together into sets of waves at a time. As you look off a little way into the distance along the coast, 
you can see an area where the waves nearing the shore are making a lattice shaped wave pattern. And a little bit beyond that, the waves are rolling taller and curling over sooner as they approach the beach. As you look down across the beautiful golden sandy beach, you can spot the occasional person walking their dog, the way some of the dogs just walk along with their human companions, and other dogs seem to get excited by the sea. They run and jump into the water, splashing among the waves before running wet back into the sand and rolling around. There are also some couples walking hand in hand, a few individuals and people dotted around on the sand enjoying the sun. You take your time to enjoy the journey to the seafront, rather than rushing past all of the beauty. You notice butterflies flying from flower to flower, sometimes stopping a while on a single flower with their wings folded up while drinking from the plant, before slowly moving their wings and then launching back into the air in an instant. You watch as bees bob from flower to flower, sometimes walking around on the outside of a bulbous plant with many small, delicate, densely packed flowers. Other times they push themselves deep into the head of a flower, before backing out again, often covered in pollen. Songbirds hop around the meadow and land in bushes, hopping along and moving quickly from place to place. You find a suitable location to rest for a bit up here in this meadow on a hill. Unroll a sheet over a patch of clear meadow. Place your backpack on the back of the sheet and sit down. You lay back with your head resting on your backpack and gaze up towards the sky. You can watch the way the clouds move across your field of view. The fluffy clouds forming shapes which stimulate memories and ideas of different animals. And as those clouds float past, those imaginary cloud animals start to morph and shift, often into other variations of the same animal, and then into other animals entirely. You may watch as a bunny rabbit sitting upright morphs into a rabbit leaping and then transforms from the leaping bunny into a swan before becoming an abstract image. Other clouds are lighter and wispier. And there are the small, fluffy clouds. These clouds slowly form and disappear before your eyes as they pass across the sky. You can select one of these clouds and imagine that you are raising that cloud. And as you do, you can see it fading and disappearing as if you're rubbing the cloud out. This can feel like an unusual but interesting experience. While watching the clouds and feeling the warmth of the sun on your cheeks and how you adapt to that warmth, almost becoming unaware of it until another cloud passes over the sun and you notice the absence of the sun's warmth on your cheeks. Then after the cloud passes, you feel the sun's rays tickling and warming your cheeks again. 
you find that your mind drifts and wanders and you start to daydream. And as you daydream and you begin to drift and float so peacefully and comfortably into a reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing how your head's resting gently on that backpack, how it is supported gently in place, the comfort in and around your head resting there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take before moving your awareness around your face, focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas soften and relax, Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax. Deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. And you can continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips and your jaw. Relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around to the back of your neck and around your throat. As your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders as that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way to the tips of your fingers. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, 
before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed, while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead enveloping your face and head with healing deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing, peace and calm, spreading that healing restorative, recuperative light down through your body, breathing in healing, calm, relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension, aware of that healing light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light through the neck as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders. Around the back of your neck, and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way down to the tips of the fingers, and with another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation as the light journeys down. around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie. And as your mind drifts deeper and deeper into a reverie, So resting here, lying on that sheet, in that meadow on that hillside, a short distance from the ocean, hearing the sound of the ocean, the sound of those waves rolling in onto the shore. can evoke certain pleasant memories and ideas. And you can find something soothing and 
peaceful and relaxing about resting on this sheet, on this hillside, aware of the way that the clouds pass across the sun by the shadows that pass across your field of view through your closed eyelids. Aware of the texture of the sheet beneath you, perhaps having your hands down beside you, the palms of your hands and your fingertips touching the sheet. Feeling the gradual increase in warmth of the sheet as it warms up under the sun's light. Hearing that gentle rustle that you get in a meadow full of grasses and plants as they sway and rub together in the breeze. And almost creating a mental representation in your mind of this meadow that you're resting back in on this hillside, imagining in your mind's eye those bees and butterflies traveling from plant to plant. Imagining in your mind's eye, off along the coast, that lighthouse standing tall and strong. That woodland at the top of the hill, stretching back far into the distance. Enjoying just being in the moment, resting here on this sheet. In this meadow on this hillside, listening to the sound of the sea. Aware that shortly you'll be heading down to the seafront. really absorbing yourself in the moment, in this experience. Hearing the sound of the waves rolling in, pulling back out, rolling in, Pulling back out that regularity of the sea. Feeling the warmth of the sun on your cheeks. And on your hands. And perhaps the sun is warming you as a person that little bit more. And having a sense almost like the sun is projecting more of that healing light into you. As you drift deeper and deeper, healing deeper and deeper inside. Hearing the occasional distant sound of someone whistling or calling for a dog. And other occasional sounds in the distance. 
sometimes the sound of a bird overhead. And an interesting thing about resting here with your eyes closed on the side of a hill in a meadow is that the moment can almost seem to become timeless where you begin to lose track of time where it doesn't feel like you've been resting here that long but you don't know how long that time has been. And after a while of resting here on this sheet, really enjoying the experience, you drift back from this reverie Gently opening your eyes and packing away the sheet. Shaking that sheet off before you put it into your backpack. Just to shake off the loose grass and other debris that's got onto the sheet while it's been on the ground. And then you continue to head down through this meadow on this hillside, down towards the beach. And as you head down towards the beach, so you discover that the ground begins to get a little steeper and at the point that it gets steeper, there's a path for you to follow, and the path consists of a number of steps, and the path takes you diagonally down to that seafront, rather than heading straight down, and it weaves diagonally one way, with each step being almost like a platform. That you step on the step and then have to walk to the end of the step, to step down to the next step, and then walk to the end of the step, to step down to the next step, and then walk to the end of the step, to step down to the next step, before following a path around, zigzagging, heading back the other direction, walking to the edge of the step, stepping down to the next step. And the zigzag happens about four times from the top to the bottom before stepping onto the beach. And so you begin to descend those steps. Stepping on to step 20, then 19, walking to the edge of the step, then down onto step 18, and 17. Finding yourself becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step that you take. Stepping onto step 16, and then 15, where you have to follow the step around to face down the next run of steps. Stepping onto step 14, Slowly, carefully, softly descending, really enjoying the experience, looking around you as you descend, looking out over that beach.
stepping on to step 13, and 12, and 11, all the way deeper and deeper, noticing the way that you feel deeper, absorbed, and more relaxed with each step that you take. Stepping onto step 10 and heading around to the next set of steps. Stepping onto step 9, step 8, slowly, deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience. Onto step 7, 6. Five, heading around to descend the last set of steps, relaxing so peacefully and comfortably as you step onto step four, three, two, and then stepping onto step one before stepping off onto the beach, feeling that soft golden sand beneath your feet, noticing how it makes walking different when you're walking on incredibly soft, powdery golden sand, with your feet sinking with each step into that sand so gently, so comfortably, so peacefully. And you walk away from the hill that you've just descended. And you can see a little way up from the ocean is a wavy row of seaweed and sticks and other bits and pieces that have been washed up onto the shore that marks the barrier between the high tide as far as the sea reaches and the dry sand beyond the reach of the sea here. And you walk along the beach a little way. And you head in the opposite direction to where most of the people are, aware that most dog walkers, most people who come down to this beach, to sit and enjoy the experience of resting on a beach. Families coming and playing on the beach. They all stick down the other end of the beach. Whereas not so many people come to this end of the beach where it's only really accessible from walking through the woodland, cutting across that meadow and the hill, descending those steps. And even when people do take this route, they normally are circling around, perhaps on a walk, and so they turn and head in the opposite direction to the direction you're taking. And so you walk along that beach. You find the ideal spot to set up a camp. 
and you're some distance away from the hills and cliffs, but also well above that line of the reach of the sea. You set up a small tent on this beach. You prepare a campfire for lighting later. You then change ready to go into the sea. You grab your snorkel. And you walk barefoot. Through that soft golden sand. And you can really feel the warmth of that sand under each foot. The tickling feeling of the loose, dry sand between your toes. And the way the sand is a lot cooler just beneath the surface. You can notice the thickening up and the more solid sand as you get closer and closer to the water's edge. And as you reach the water's edge, you gently walk into the water, noticing how warm that sea water is. Almost like walking into a comfortable bath. You place the snorkel in your mouth. The mask over your eyes. You continue walking until you're at waist height, feeling the sensation of the water around your lower body, around your waist. Almost like feeling that tension of the surface of the water against your waist. And that sensation as waves rise and fall so gently up and down your body as they pass you by. And when you're just over waist height into the water, you lift your legs off the bottom and lean forward slightly and begin to swim, placing your face looking down through the water. And you gently kick your feet, swimming along, looking down through that clear water, seeing tiny fish swimming around, some colourful, some groups of fish, which are a light brown colour, seeming to swim on the spot before darting away from your shadow as your shadow moves across that small shawl of fish. Feeling the peace and calmness of this underwater world while your ears a hearing, the surface world, that sea rolling into the shore. And yet everything seems so much more still and peaceful underwater. And after a while of enjoying that feeling of weightlessness, floating, resting there, 
almost like floating in space, where when you just close your eyes while you float on the surface of the water, it brings a deep sense of peace and calm. Noticing how floating on the water with your face submerged seems to trigger a deep relaxation. Seems to slow your breathing and deepen your breathing so comfortably, so relaxed. Deepening deeper and deeper. Then after a while, You swim back towards the shore. And at first you continue to swim back towards the shore. Feeling that sensation of the waves almost pushing you towards the shore as they roll in. Until you're aware that you're very close to the shore. And so you just place your feet down. Stand up. Feel that water as it runs down the face mask, down your face, down your body. So cool compared to the warmth of the sun. And you take the face mask and the snorkel off from your head. You head over to your tent. Pick up a towel and dry your face. And dab the towel over your head and around your body to dry you off. Feeling a slight tension to your skin from that salty water as it dries. Knowing that this will pass in a short moment. And placing that towel on the ground in the entrance to the tent. While the clothes you're wearing are still damp from being in the sea. And sitting down on that towel. And as you sit on that towel, so you... Make preparations to light that campfire. And then you lean forward and you light the campfire. Hearing it crackle to life. Forming a steady, crackling, popping sound. And then you have something to eat and something to drink while you see that the sun is beginning to gently set. And while the sun is beginning to set peacefully and comfortably over the horizon. You notice the way it casts the most beautiful hue across the ocean. How the sound of the ocean seems to change because of the change of the atmosphere, the temperature. Or perhaps just because of the change of the setting. With it being evening and night time approaching. The 
that it makes you feel slightly different in a calm and pleasant way to the environment, to how you felt before, how there seems to be something deeply relaxing, almost like drifting asleep, just in the nature of seeing the setting sun. And as the sun fully sets, so you can see the sky changing colour from reds and oranges through blues to dark blue and eventually to an almost black coloured sky with the twinkling stars overhead and that fire as the night gets later and later burns gently down to embers and as it burns gently to embers with the most beautiful orange glow on the sand flickering light and shadows you settle back into your tent still listening to the sea in the background You read a book for a little while before discovering that your eyes keep wanting to shut at which point you place that book down you zip up the tent And with that fire so softly crackling as embers outside the tent. And that sea just gently lapping onto the shore. You drift and begin to float so peacefully, so deeply asleep. finding it so easy and effortless to honestly and fully drift asleep. So deeply relaxed, asleep into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself walking through a forest. And as you gently walk through this nighttime forest, you can hear the first sounds of rain as that rain begins to fall on the leaves of the trees around you and some of that rain gradually finds its way through the canopy and down to where you are as you continue to walk through this forest And while you walk through this forest, hearing that rain hitting the leaves overhead and all around you in all directions, the occasional drip of water that makes its way through the canopy, 
you push through those trees, and as you do, you can feel the damp bark beneath your hands, the texture of that bark of those trees, the feeling of each footstep that you take on the ground as you step over some fallen down trunks, navigate over roots crossing your path, hearing the gentle sound of each footstep as you go, just seeing the faintest of glow within this forest, as you light your way with a torch attached to your top, and occasionally you notice shadows of branches and tree trunks dancing on other branches and tree trunks as you pass them by. In the sight of the rain that manages to just about work its way through just the occasional few lines of drops of water breaking through the canopy, sometimes feeling that sensation of some raindrops hitting your shoulders or perhaps hitting your head, maybe even running down into your neck. And you continue to push on through this forest. And while you push on, you're searching for some sanctuary from this weather. You know that this Rain is going to increase, and that there's a storm coming, and you want to be safely indoors by then, and you're aware that there's a cabin deep in this forest. You know that the cabin is empty currently. And you know this forest like the back of your hand. You know those who live deep in this forest in different cabins. And those who just stay in their cabins from time to time. And you continue trekking through this forest. And after what seems quite a while of trekking through the forest, you come to a clearing, and in this clearing is a lake in the middle of the forest. And you know that the cabin is a little bit around this lake, just out of sight, and so you know you need to walk around the lake, and then head just away from the lake shore, around a patch of forest, where you'll find the cabin. And as you walk out into the clearing, so you Notice more of that rain soaking you through. And you feel glad that the weather is just the most comfortable temperature so that although your clothes are getting wet, you still feel comfortable. Although at the same time you do look forward 
to being able to change into some dry clothes when you reach the cabin. And while walking around the lake in this forest, you can just about notice the tops of the trees opposite against the dark sky. And that with the rain clouds hanging low in the sky overhead, they add a very slight glow overhead, almost like a slight grey-blue glow, that means that you can see the tops of the trees against the clouds in the distance. You also notice way off in the distance the occasional flash of light hovering in the sky, aware of that distant thunderstorm that's currently so distant that any thunder is too faint to hear here. You have this sense almost like perhaps you notice a little bit of the sound of thunder, but you can't quite make it out, because it's so distant, and the sound of the rain on the leaves of the trees makes too much noise to be able to hear that distant rumble of thunder. And now there's just the subtle added sound of some of that rain on the lake. And that is barely audible and differentiatable to the sound of the rain on the slight meadow area that you're crossing, in this slight clearing in the forest and the greater sound of the rain hitting all of the surrounding trees, bouncing off the cacophony of leaves. But what you can do is look out across the lake and see that rain striking the lake water and the lake is calm, with long and low waves, just gently rolling towards the shore, barely noticeable. And so it really makes the circular patterns of the raindrops striking the water stand out. And you walk slowly past this lake, almost transfixed by the way that the rain is striking the water, having a sense that you occasionally see a dancing glow hovering above the water, and you wonder if it's fireflies dancing and avoiding the raindrops as they fall flying above the water of the lake. And you watch that for a while while you continue to walk around the outside of this lake, feeling that rain as it runs down your cheeks, drips a little bit from your hair, feeling the rain on your hands and noticing your torchlight illuminating the rain before you and what that looks like, that rain in the torchlight 
and you continue around this lake. And in the distant shadows around the lake, in the darkness, you can just make out the faint sight of a jetty sticking out into this lake. And you know that that jetty is in line with the cabin. So you continue to walk around the lake towards that jetty. And as you approach the jetty, you can hear just the faintest hint of the sound of the rain on the wood of the jetty. Still drowned out by the sound of the rain and the trees. And you look in the opposite direction to the jetty. And all you can see is darkness. But you know that there's a cabin up there. And you turn to face that direction. And your torchlight is illuminating the meadow before you. And you walk up in the direction of the cabin. And as you get closer to the cabin, and closer and closer, so your torchlight begins to reflect off of features, initially reflecting on the windows. And then you notice beside the windows, the subtle hint of the wood of the cabin. You continue to walk towards that cabin. And as you arrive at the cabin, you walk around the cabin initially, walking all the way around to the back of the cabin, and then back around to the front. You walk up to the front door, and all of the lights are off. And you know that there should be nobody here at this time. But you politely knock on the door anyway. And you wait a few moments. And after a few moments of waiting, with no response, You knock again just to be sure, waiting a few moments more. And then when nobody appears, you crouch down to the gnome beside the front door. You lift up that gnome. And in the base of the gnome is a little compartment. Do you open that compartment and find a key? You take that key and then seal the compartment and place the gnome back down on the ground. You quietly and carefully open the door. Walking inside the cabin. Closing that door behind you. And you turn on the lights to the cabin. 
You can hear that rain outside, hearing the sound of the rain on the windows of the cabin. Almost having a sense that you can hear the sound of that rain on the roof of the cabin, and on the walls of the cabin, as if that rain is almost reverberating through the entire cabin. You turn off your torch. You place a backpack that you've got with you down onto the floor. You take off your jacket. You go looking around the cabin. You head to the bathroom. And you grab a towel and you dry your face, the back of your neck, behind your ears. You dry your head, your hair, and your hands. And as you're drying yourself off, so you head back through to the main room of the cabin. And in the main room of the cabin, You change into some dry clothes, some comfortable, almost nighttime clothes that you have with you. And attached to your backpack is a single person tent. And as you notice your tent there, you just think to yourself, for a moment that with this weather you'd much rather be in this cabin than out there among the trees in that tent. You make sure that your bag is placed to one side out of the way. You make yourself some food and a drink. And you can smell the smell of the wood of the inside of this cabin. And have a sense that this cabin seems to have such a comforting smell to it. You head over to the fireplace. You place some of the logs and wood shavings into that fireplace. You light that fire and watch that light dance to life. And the comfortable warmth of the fire pulse out into the room. Gently warming your cheeks, your hands. Bringing a deep sense of comfort and relaxation. You prod that fire just a little bit. Before sitting down into a, an armchair beside that fireplace. listening to the gentle crackling of the fire in that fireplace. Observing the dancing shadows around the walls of the furniture. And as you relax, there, listening to the gently crackling fire, with the soft lights on in the room. You begin to feel a deep sense of peace and calm, while still hearing that rain on the windows outside.
and you eat that food and drink your drink. And almost feel a sense of being refreshed and revitalized. Aware that you're much drier now. And you feel so comfortable here. And over a period of time, the fire burns down a little. So that it's just comfortably bubbling along in that fireplace. Giving the most warm, comforting glow. And after you've finished your food and drink, while still being aware of the sound of the rain on the window, Begin to find your mind drifting and floating peacefully inside, almost as if floating into a reverie. And you have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You start to focus on the top of your head. Noticing how your head is resting there. How your head is so gently supported in place. Noticing the comfort in and around your head while it rests so gently there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take. Before moving your awareness around your face. Focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks, perhaps with the warmth of that light from the fire. Having the muscles in these areas soften and begin to relax so deeply. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. And you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips and your jaw, relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around to the back of your neck and around your throat. 
softening, relaxing, deeper and deeper. And as your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and your upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders. As that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest. softening and relaxing those muscles fully, deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles continue to soften and Relax while you rest there. That relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way to the tips of your fingers. I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, through your sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs, to the tips of your toes, And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed, while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead enveloping your face and head with healing, deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing peace and calm, spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body, breathing in healing, calm relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck, as it spreads down with the next breath.
breath to your shoulders, around the back of your neck and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way down to your fingertips. And with another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation. As the light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie. You have that sense of resting in that chair, feeling how supported you are in that chair, how deeply relaxed. with your eyes closed and noticing the faint flickering and dancing of the light through those closed eyelids from the comfortable fire in the fireplace. And you can hear the sound of the rain on the windows and hear the distant storm rolling in gently. And you have this sense, almost like you're opening your eyes and awakening from the reverie, but knowing that you're still deeply within that reverie and leaving the chair beginning to walk over to a window of the cabin that looks out towards the lake. And as you walk away from the chair, you see yourself out of your peripheral vision, resting, sleeping, looking so incredibly peaceful, deeply relaxed. And you silently head to that window. As you gaze out into the darkness, and you can see the way the rain strikes the window. Raindrops race down that window, almost like streaks of light racing from where they strike the window all the way down to the base of the window, looking as if they're weaving and dodging obstacles on their path. And you see as you gaze out over the lake, The dancing, moving, flying lights that you still assume are fireflies, wondering how they are flying in this rain, and the flashes of light beyond the forest as the storm continues to approach. 
and then you notice some of those lights coming nearer to the cabin, and you watch through the dark window. In that gentle glow from within the cabin, of the soft lights of the fireplace, and you realize that it's a small fairy. And it comes up near the window and seems to be studying you with as much intensity as you are studying it. And it hovers with its wings almost in a blur, shimmering in the most beautiful light. And you watch that beautiful fairy hovering in the window for a while as that fairy watches you back. And you wonder what other magic is out there in this forest. And whether this is still a reverie or perhaps some kind of astral projection where you've been able to travel outside of your body while you rest there, almost psychically traveling over to the window and looking out of that window. And after a while of gazing out of that window, the fairy flies back off again and seems to carry on whatever it was they were doing. You notice that all those lights look like they're flying around with purpose. So you wonder whether there's just something that they have to do every night. Come rain or nice weather. And you feel that sense of being drawn back to your body. And so you head back to your body. You relax back down into your body, deeper and deeper. And then find that your eyes open while you're resting in that chair. You notice how much that fire has burned down now to just the most gentle embers. You go over to the window, and there's some condensation on the window, so you rub that condensation away with your sleeve. You look out of that window, and you can see those lights flying around with purpose. You think about your experience, and wonder whether it was just a reverie or something more. You sit in the chair for a while longer, reading a good book. Your sleeve gently drying off by the last of the warmth of the fire that storm still unchanged outside, some sound of thunder, the sound of the rain on the windows. And in this room, there's a long and comfortable sofa. And so you go and grab a blanket from a cupboard. You head to that sofa. You tuck that blanket over the top of the sofa, 
hanging it diagonally down, making a sofa tent. You turn off the light. You settle down into your sofa tent, that blanket hanging across the sofa. And this sofa is so incredibly comfortable to relax on. And as you relax on that sofa, you're aware of the sounds around you. And while you're aware of those sounds, you want to begin to comfortably drift asleep. And so you close your eyes and you imagine yourself standing at the top of 20 steps, looking down over the most beautiful garden. And you begin to descend those steps. Stepping onto step 20, and then 19, and down onto 18 and 17. Becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step. Being more aware of the garden below, of the flowers in the garden, the insects flying from flower to flower that bench across the other side of the garden, along a path, the trees around the outside of the garden, the bushes, the songbirds in this garden. As you continue to descend, becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step that you're taking, 16, 15, 14, so slowly and carefully and softly descending those steps deeper and deeper into the most comfortable, relaxing sleep. 13, 12, 11, knowing this Strategy works so well for you to help you fall asleep deeply and comfortably. All the way deeper and deeper. Noticing the way that you feel deeper absorbed and more relaxed in the experience with each step that you take. As you step onto step 10, 9, 8, slowly, deeper, and deeper absorbed in the experience, 7, 6, 5, being even more aware of this garden that you're walking into, perhaps, Noticing the smells in this garden. Relaxing so peacefully and comfortably as you step onto step. Four. Three. Two. And then stepping off of the bottom step. One. Where you find yourself walking comfortably along a path towards that bench. And as you walk comfortably to that bench and arrive at that bench and settle down on that bench in the most comfortable way that you can, you feel a deep sense of peace and calm. A 
aware that relaxing on this bench in this garden is bringing deep comfort, relaxation and stillness to your mind and body as you transition towards the most beautiful lucid dreaming sleep and then through the various stages of sleep knowing you'll get the perfect night's sleep, the perfect combination of dreaming sleep and deep recuperative sleep. And then as you pass into that deep recuperative sleep, it's almost like you're relaxing back on that bench in this place, closing your eyes, drifting, floating, relaxing deeper and deeper into the most incredible peace and calm of sleep. Now, and as you continue to sleep, now the garden fades away, the bench fades away, the experience of all that fades away, and you notice the sounds in the distance around you of that rain on the windows in the cabin, the storm beyond those windows, beyond the forest, feeling so deeply relaxed and deeper and deeper asleep with those sounds in the background, finding that they help you to be absorbed in your experience of sleeping soundly through the night, in the most appropriate and comfortable way, and drifting and floating so easily and effortlessly, honestly and fully, Drifting asleep, finding yourself drifting deeper and deeper asleep, drifting and floating, deeply relaxed, asleep into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to to make yourself more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself walking along the edge of that river. You can hear the sound of the water flowing by down that river beside you. And you're up on a slight bank, a little way up from the water's edge. And yet you can still hear that water as waves gently lap at the shore. And while you walk, perhaps you can be aware of what each footstep feels like. Or perhaps even the feeling of the nighttime air against your cheeks. And as you continue to walk along this riverbank, you can see the moon 
glowing in the night sky, the way the moonlight is twinkling and sparkling on the surface of that river as those waves travel down the river and out towards the shore. You can perhaps notice the occasional splash or flutter in the water as perhaps an unseen duck is washing itself in that water at the edge of the river. And so you continue to walk along this river bank. The environment around you, illuminated and touched by the silvery glow of the moon. The grass taking on a slight blue hue with a silver tinge waving in the breeze that slight rustling of distant trees. Continuing to walk, seeing the stars in the night sky. And as you follow this river bank, so you have a sense of how it's gently curving, and while it's gently curving, you can see against the dark blue sky in the background, the silhouette of woodland, and you're aware that the riverbank is gradually curving around for you to be facing that woodland. And so you continue to meander along this riverbank, occasionally finding yourself lost in thought as your mind wanders and wonders while you wander. And after a little while of walking around that river bank, you can see that in the distance, above the woodland, seems to be the silhouette of a castle. And some of the lights in that castle and the windows are on, the faintest glow from those windows, while the rest of the castle remains dark. And so you continue to follow this riverbank round towards that woodland towards that castle. And after some time of walking, hard to know exactly how long, you decide to stop for a little while. You sit down on that riverbank. Your feet pointing down the bank towards the water's edge. Your bottom resting on that grass. Feeling the cool grass beneath your hands as you sit down.
placing a bag that you have with you behind you. And with that bag behind you, so you rest back, resting your head on the bag. And with your head rested on your bag, you can see the stars like diamonds twinkling in the sky overhead. And the moon off to the side. The silhouette of the trees in that castle. The sound of the water flowing past. And you find the whole experience deeply relaxing and peaceful. And as you find the experience relaxing and peaceful, you begin to drift into a pleasant reverie, finding your eyes occasionally blinking before they just want to remain closed. And as you drift and float, so peacefully and so comfortably into that reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing what your head is resting on how your head is supported gently in place. The comfort in and around your head resting there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing. Drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take, before moving your awareness around to your face. Focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas soften and relax. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head, begin to relax deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension or perhaps find that tension dissolved without paying it any attention at all. And you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips and your jaw, relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around the back of your neck and around your throat. And as your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders as they 
begin to comfortably relax deeper and deeper with that relaxation progressing around your back and your chest softening and relaxing those muscles fully deeply and comfortably and as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there that relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands all the way down to the fingertips and I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other and as that relaxation continues flowing through those arms it can flow down through your stomach your sides and your lower back all the way down to your bottom before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes and as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed while you drift into the most pleasant sleep so your mind can begin to relax you begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead enveloping you wrapping around your face and head with healing, deep peace, calm and relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing, peace and calm, spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body, Breathing in healing, calm relaxation and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles spreading that healing light throughout the neck as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders around the back of your neck and down into your arms gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way to your fingertips And with another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation. As that light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks, and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. 
And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into the reverie. And as you drift deeper and deeper into the reverie, you have that sense of the world around you, almost imagining in your mind's eye the history of all the people who've travelled along this riverbank towards that castle. All the people who were just passing by, and those, especially merchants, who perhaps stopped at the castle to sell locals here various wares. Continuing to drift deeper and deeper into the reverie, being aware of the sound of the water in the background, the feeling of the grass under your fingertips and the palms of your hands, that cool nighttime breeze tickling your cheeks, sometimes perhaps tickling your nose a little, And yet the air smelling so fresh and so calm, that slight watery air smell, with a mix of the smell of the flowers in the meadows around you, And you find the experience of lying back here on the riverbank so deeply satisfying and relaxing. With the blue glow of the night arching overhead. And then after a little while, you begin to have a sense of drifting back to more awareness of the here and now on that riverbank. Drifting out of that reverie. You stand up and pick up your bag, continuing your journey along that river bank. You head along the river bank until you come to the bottom of that hill, and this hill is surrounded by woodland, a lot of woodland and the base and woodland climbing that hill. And so you head off road a little, you head into that woodland to begin to ascend to the castle. And while you head into the woodland, you occasionally push branches out the way and touch the bark of trees, feeling the detailed texture of the bark beneath your fingertips. And once round and heading into that woodland, 
you notice the way that your footsteps sound different, a slightly more muted sound, and yet still just a faint background sound that perhaps, unless you really pay attention, you're barely noticing. You push on through that woodland, ascending the hill. And while pushing through the woodland and ascending, noticing that it's darker inside the woodland than it was out in the moonlight, you can still see some of those silvery shards of light breaking through the canopy overhead and dancing in front of you in slight clouds of dust. And you find your way to that castle wall. And when you arrive at the castle wall, you reach out and touch that wall with your hand, feeling the texture of the stone underneath your fingertips, the palm of your hand. And with your fingertips just gently, almost imperceptibly touching that castle wall, you begin to walk around the wall, trying to find the entrance. And you follow this wall around. And there aren't too many trees or branches this close to the wall. And so it's quite straightforward to walk around the wall. With all the woodland on one side of you and the wall on the other. And as you follow that wall and head around that castle, you come to a slight clearing and realize that there's a track leading up to the entrance to this castle. And you can look down that track, see the way that track heads down the hill and curves around, presumably heading down further to the base of the hill and out of the woods. You head to the castle entrance, knock on the entrance. You don't get a reply, so you just knock again and still not getting a reply, you open the entrance and walk inside. And inside you can hear the sound of a fire crackling away in a room. You can see the light of the fire dancing And it seems that there's a fire lit in a room a little way down the corridor. And that light is dancing out into the corridor. And so you walk down this corridor. You peer into that room. And as you peer into that room, so you see someone who looks very friendly, just sitting there, reading a book in front of that fire, with a drink beside them on a side table. And this room looks so cosy and comfortable. That orangey glow from the fire. 
and you give a little cough to gain attention. And the person turns around and apologises for not noticing you. They say that they were lost in thought in their book. And they frequently do this. And they're smiling and friendly and they offer to make you a drink and ask if you want anything to eat. And they gesture for you to then sit in a seat near the fire. So you head over, you sit down in that seat, feeling the warmth of that fire on your cheeks. They ask you if you've come far. And ask you to talk a little about your journey. And after they do this, they say, do you want to take a look around? And so the two of you walk from this room and explore the castle. And as you explore the castle, you look in different rooms. You enjoy walking down the corridors, seeing the artwork on the walls, the statues in the corridors. They take you to a room a few floors up. And the room is at the end of a long corridor with a long rug straight down the middle of that corridor. They open the door to the room. You walk in and they light the torches in this room. And under the flicker of those torches, you see that this is a library. You can see that it's full of old books. And in the middle of this library is the strangest thing. Is what looks like a stone. And poking at a slight angle in the centre of this stone seems to be a sword. And your host notices that you've noticed this stone and this sword. They explain that this is the sword in the stone. That contrary to myths, nobody has been able to remove it from the stone. And so their relatives hundreds of years earlier, just decided to have the whole stone dug up and brought to the castle with that sword contained within it. And when no one could remove the sword from the stone, they tried to hack away at the stone Deciding if you can't remove the sword from the stone, perhaps you can remove the stone from the sword. But no matter how hard they tried to hack and chisel away at the stone, that stone remained in a single piece. And so for hundreds of years, that sword in the stone has sat in this library, waiting, hoping one day someone will be able to come along and remove it from the stone. And without any real thought, you reach forward to touch that sword with your fingertips. 
and you feel a slight tingle and a slight glow and a slight sense of empowerment and pleasure and excitement. And so without giving any real thought, you take hold of the handle of that sword and just easily and effortlessly lift the sword from the stone. And your host watches in awe and amazement at you doing this. And they tell you that this means something. They've been waiting a very long time for someone who can do this. And you place that sword back in the stone. And you become aware that being able to remove that sword from the stone seemed to mean something to them. And you found it so incredibly easy to do that you don't know if their entire story was just make-believe and that that sword is actually perfectly easy for anyone to just pick up out of the stone if they wanted to, and that it's just a story. And you begin to hear the sound of a storm beginning to roll in outside. And so your host says they really look forward to talking with you more in the morning. But perhaps right now, it would be best for you to settle down for the night. And they say there's a room that you can stay in. And they head from the library back out into the corridor. Following the corridor in a different direction, heading down to a distant door. On the other side of the door are some steps leading down. And they tell you that this part of the castle is dark. But there are twenty steps to descend, to get to the floor below. And at the floor below, they can light another torch and then take you to your room. And so while the two of you begin to descend those steps, you start to count down those steps in your mind's eye, stepping onto step 20, then 19, then 18, walking slowly, carefully and quietly down those steps. Running your hand around the handrail as you go, feeling the coolness of the wood of the handrail beneath the palm of your hand. Stepping on step 17, almost finding yourself becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step that you take, on to step 16 and 15, and 14, slowly, carefully, softly, descending, on to step 13 and 12, and step 11, heading all the way deeper and deeper, noticing the way that you feel deeper absorbed and more relaxed with each step that you take. Stepping onto step 10 and 9 and 
eight, slowly, deeply, going deeper and deeper, absorbed in the experience, seven, six, five, relaxing so peacefully and comfortably as you go, stepping onto step four, three, two, and one, stepping off of that bottom step, where the host lights a torch, and then walks carrying that torch in front of you, heading along a corridor. The dullest of sounds of the footsteps on the rug along this corridor. Such a thick, comfortable rug, almost like walking on damp sand. And following that corridor until they stop at a room. They open the door to that room. They show you into that room and tell you that you can sleep here for tonight. You head into the room. You sit on the bed and almost sink into the bed. It's so soft and comfortable. Just the perfect level of softness and comfort for you to have a great night's sleep. And you can hear the storm getting closer outside. The sound of the rain beginning on the window to this room. You prepare yourself for bed. You rest back into that bed wrapping yourself so comfortably under the blankets. Curious what tomorrow will bring, looking forward to tomorrow. And as you rest there, looking forward to tomorrow, You find your eyes getting heavier and heavier, increasingly wanting to close. And the more you try to keep your eyes open to focus on what you want to do and look forward to tomorrow, the heavier and heavier those eyes get and the more asleep you begin to fall. And so eventually you just let those eyes close. Settling down in that bed, feeling the comfortable feeling of that pillow under your head. The comfortable weight of the blankets across your body. This bed being absolutely perfect for you to settle down into and relax and sleep soundly all night long. And finding yourself settling down, drifting asleep. Easily and effortlessly, honestly and fully, relaxing, drifting, floating asleep, drifting deeper and deeper asleep with each Breath that you take, just floating, deeply relaxed, asleep. Initially, through some dreams, perhaps. Drifting into some pleasant place in your mind, before progressing on to a deep, comfortable sleep. Sleeping soundly all night long. Drifting asleep 
into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself in the evening walking through a forest. And occasionally as you walk through this forest, it's easy going. There's plenty of room between the trees. And at other times, you need to hack your way through a little bit and climb over fallen down trees and other obstacles in your path. But you're aware that all of this is just part of the journey that you're going on to find that crystal cave. And here in this forest, every direction looks the same. And so you're following satellite navigation, constantly checking that you're still on track towards that cave. And even at the height of daytime, this forest is often quite dark due to the density of the canopy overhead. And as you continue through this forest, you have a torch attached to your top, which is illuminating the way in front of you. You also have a torch on your head that then illuminates the direction that you're looking. And so you can continue as the sun sets and the forest becomes darker and darker to find your way. You can look around you, left and right in front of you. You can look up, you can look behind you, while at the same time, as you look around, your peripheral vision is able to help you to see where you're going because of the body torch which is lighting the way. So you don't have to keep stopping every time you point the torch in a different direction. And while you walk through this forest, occasionally hearing the cracking of the branches beneath your feet, especially as you climb over fallen down trunks of trees, and sometimes cracking branches that you grab hold of while navigating through the forest. You can feel what each footstep feels like and how the footsteps can feel different when you're walking through vegetation on the ground compared to the areas of the forest 
that are quite sparse of vegetation on the ground. And it's almost like you're walking just on mud on a harder surface. And sometimes you find yourself following a natural animal track that's well trodden and easier to follow. And so you make good ground following the animal track. And then when the animal track ends and you have to push through the forest yourself again, creating your own track, it slows you down some more. And it's hard work to be pushing through a forest in this way. And yet, you know that it's rewarding. And that the chance to get to see that crystal cave is a huge reward for this effort that you're putting in. That you've got this idea of the crystal cave in your mind. You've seen images of it. But you know that nothing could compare to seeing that cave in person. And so you continue to push through this dark forest. You can hear various forest sounds of animals, of insects. And something about those sounds is so calming, so peaceful. Almost like background noise. Almost like the static of a TV. Something that could just so easily send you to sleep. And the interesting thing about those background sounds is that unlike if you go to an ocean where all the sound comes from one direction, those background sounds envelop you, they seem to come from all directions around you. Almost like there's no fixed location for anything that you can hear, other than occasionally hearing some of your footsteps. And while you continue to trek through this forest, there are areas where the canopy is slightly thinner, perhaps due to a tree falling down. And you can see the shards of silvery light penetrating that canopy and dancing before you as the wind above blows a gentle breeze over the top of the canopy, just gently moving those branches high overhead. And you notice some of the dust particles seeming to almost glow and pop into existence and then out of existence again within the beams of light. And as you continue to walk through the forest, sometimes you have to lean on the trees. You can feel that bark beneath your hands, your fingertips, how some bark is rough and highly textured and other bark is smooth. Some bark is flaky and crumbly. And some is very solid. And there are some trees which have bark almost like they're wrapped in paper.
and other times you have to push branches and leaves out of your way and you feel those branches with that hand and the different textures of different leaves some leaves being broader than others and waxier than others and from time to time you pull out the GPS device from your pocket, press the button to turn the screen on, see the glow of that screen, the line on the device to follow, and a flashing dot for your location in relation to that line, with a faded cone on one side of that dot that shows the direction the GPS device is pointing. And so being able to see by the direction of that cone, which direction you're traveling, and whether you're heading in the correct direction. And sometimes you need to make subtle adjustments to get back on course, especially after pushing through more dense forest, or trying to work your way around an area where you need to perhaps get back on track. And although you feel like You've got yourself back on track and you're pointing back in the right direction. When every direction looks the same, it's easy to be subtly off course. And you're aware that if you're off course by a little bit, then over a short distance, it doesn't make a lot of difference. But as minutes tick into hours, it can reach a point where being a little bit off course can be a long way off course. Hours later, and occasionally in the forest, you hear the sound of an owl and that sound can stand out directionally compared to the other sounds which just seem to be all around and sometimes that sound of an owl can be there but because your attention isn't focused on it, a part of you questions whether you heard it or not, because you are too busy paying attention to the path that you're taking and making your journey. And as you see that you're approaching your coordinates, you're aware that the night time is quite some way along. The sun had set many hours ago, and so you're really ready to stop and rest. But you didn't want to stop and rest until you arrived at your destination. And so as you arrive at your destination, you can see the signs of the entrance to the cave in the ground. And you go to some nearby trees. And you make a tent in those trees. Making the tent off of the ground connected between three trees and then a ladder 
up to this tent. And you ascend that ladder and sit in this tent that's almost like a hammock, just in the form of a tent between those three trees. And the base of this tent is ever so slightly springy from the way that it's held up and how taut it is from how you've connected the base to those trees. And as you rest in this tent, you take a few moments to think a little bit about tomorrow, about that journey you'll be making down into the cave, making sure that all your preparations are in order. You check your bag, that you've got all your equipment still and that it's all in good working order. You then have something to eat and drink. Zip up the tent. before so easily and effortlessly finding yourself resting back, comfortably, ready to sleep. And as you begin to drift comfortably asleep, you have a sense of relaxing your mind and body you find yourself focusing on the top of your head. Noticing what your head is resting on. How your head is supported so gently in place. The comfort in and around your head as it rests there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take before moving your awareness around to your face. Focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, around your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas gently soften and relax. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head can begin to deeply relax. Relaxing deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. As you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips and your jaw, relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around to the back 
of your neck and around your throat. As your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that Relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders or you find that that relaxation progresses so peacefully, so comfortably around your back and your chest. Softening and relaxing those muscles fully, deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax, while you rest there. That relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way down to the fingertips. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest. Whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm. Or whether the arms will just gently relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms... It can flow down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper, and deeper relaxed while you drift into the most pleasant sleep. So your mind begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead, enveloping your face and head with healing deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing, peace and calm, spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body, breathing in healing, calm relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck. Softening and relaxing those muscles. Spreading that healing light throughout the neck. As it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders 
around the back of your neck and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way to the tips of the fingers. With another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation. As the light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into the most pleasant dream. And as you drift deeper and deeper into that pleasant dream, dream, you find yourself almost having that subtle sense of awareness of the gentle rocking movement of your tent in those trees, as the winds blowing a breeze across the tops of those trees, gently rocking and swaying those trees, almost like being in a cot gently rocked, or being in a hammock gently swaying side to side in the most pleasurable, deep relaxing way. And as that's happening, and your mind drifts deeper into a dream, you find it dreaming about a cave and what you might expect to find, dreaming about what the experience might be, while also dreaming about thoughts and ideas from the day that you've had, that you haven't had chance to work through yet. And so in the dream, as you dream, your mind works through the day's issues, resolving those issues, helping to find solutions, helping to find lasting solutions that you can honestly keep in mind and use. And you drift deeper into that dream state, drifting, dreaming, floating in your mind, until you pass beyond the dream, falling into deep, comfortable, recuperative sleep, healing your body from the day's journey, relieving the body of its tension, almost like the most incredible mental massage through the body. Preparing you for the day ahead. And then as the next day dawns, so you 
awaken in that tent. You open the entrance to the tent and breathe in some of that fresh air from the forest, almost tasting some of those smells from the forest as you take that breath. You have something to eat and drink. You get yourself all prepared for the day ahead. You find the equipment that you'll be needing. You make sure that there are fresh, full batteries in the torch on your body and the torch on your head. And you head over to that hole in the ground. You attach a thick, long rope to a nearby tree. Head back to that hole. Drop that rope down the hole. And descend down through that hole, descending on that rope. And after a little while, you reach a ledge. You look around you at this ledge. You see this is a perfectly safe location to be. You're following the same guides that you knew existed for this place. So you know you're in the right place to safely descend into this cave. You place a long-lasting flare into the ground. It glows red. That marks the entrance to this cave, where that rope is for you to climb back up and out. And if there's even a hint of daylight, or if the moon is in the correct angle, in the darkness of the cave, you would see the light in the ceiling of the cave. But you just want to be doubly sure and make sure you can see the exit and easily find your way back to that exit. And in the cave you notice that you can hear that gentle dripping sound of water. You know that once upon a time, thousands of years earlier, this cave was created by gently flowing water that's gradually eroded this cave away. And at times the water would fill most of the cave and it was while the cave was full of water that the crystals had formed and they formed underwater, getting larger and larger until they were an incredible size, which doesn't easily translate to photos of this cave. It's hard to get an idea of the perspective of the size of those crystals, which is why you know that the experience of seeing this through your own eyes for real will be such an incredible experience rather than just seeing a photograph. And you continue to follow the path through this cave, seeing signs of those that have gone here before, noticing 
random handles in the walls to hold at some of the slightly more slippery locations. Noticing some rope fences to keep you on track as you walk through this location, as you follow the cave deeper and deeper underground. And you can continue to hear that dripping while also noticing a certain stillness to the air here and a certain dullness to the sounds of footsteps. And after quite a while of walking deeper and deeper into this cave, you come to a ledge to descend and you attach a rope to a hook which has been kindly placed at the top of the ledge. You throw the other end of that rope down over the ledge and you can't see to the bottom and so you drop a red flare down to the ground below. You watch as that red flare falls past the face you're about to descend and lands on the ground below, illuminating the base of this ground. And you can see from how long it took that flare to fall past the face and what you observed about the distance that to abseil down this face will be about 20 steps and you'll have your back to the ground and so you decide that you'll count your way down as you descend and so you take hold of that rope you make it taut place your feet on the edge of that cliff face, gently backing yourself back until your bottom and your legs are in line with the ground. And you then begin to descend. Descending from 20 to step 19, taking step 18 and 17, having that rope sliding gently through those hands, feeling the texture of that rope as it slides, becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step that you take 16, 15, 14, slowly, carefully, softly, descending backwards down this cliff face. Thirteen. Twelve, eleven, all the way, deeper and deeper. Perhaps noticing how you feel deeper absorbed and more relaxed with each step that you take down towards the ground. Step ten, nine, eight, slowly, deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience, backing down that cliff, seven, 
six, five, relaxing so peacefully and comfortably, noticing the stillness of the air around you, four, three, two, one, and then stepping onto the ground, near to that flare, detaching yourself from the rope, and heading away from that cliff face, continuing to follow the path deeper and more relaxed into this cave, just the faint dripping sound of the water in this cave. And after walking for a while in this cave, you come out into a vast chamber. And in this vast chamber, you notice how your torch on your head and the torch on your body barely light the space. And so you light a bigger light that really illuminates the area. You stand that light on the ground, turn it on, and notice these pillars of crystal jutting up at different angles from the ground, jutting down at different angles from the ceiling. Some plain colored crystals, almost a creamy white, Others, colourful, almost like coloured glass. Each crystal as long as a bus, jutting up from the ground at different angles, and down from the ceiling. Each crystal half as wide as a car, some perhaps even as wide as a car. And you look in awe at this view. You walk around those crystals, you touch some of those crystals, feeling the smoothness of them and seeing the trickle of water passing along the ground between the crystals that obviously heads deeper into the cave and way beyond this area of crystals. That water flows down deeper and deeper to a lake deep inside this cave, continuing its erosion on another level. And you take some photographs of these crystals, knowing that in the photographs they won't do justice to the scale of this. You set a camera up on a tripod and take a photo of yourself in front of some of the crystals to try to give a sense of perspective. And after exploring this crystal cave for a while, feeling in awe of its scale, of this almost cathedral-like chamber full of crystals, only bigger than any cathedral you could ever imagine,
you start to work your way back out of this crystal cave, following that path, ascending on that rope, unhooking your rope, curling that up, placing that away, and finding your way all the way back to the entrance. And on arriving back at the entrance, you climb up the rope, exiting into the forest. Unattach your rope from the tree and head back to your tent, ready to settle down for the night because the journey just to that crystal cave underground took you many hours of exploration and although it's still a number of hours until the sun sets the climbing up and down, and the trekking is very tiring, it makes you want to just rest and relax, and make your journey out of this forest in the morning when you've got a whole day ahead of you. And for now you settle down into your tent. And you listen to those first signs of the night time forest starting just as the early evening begins to set in. And while the early evening sets in, you have something to eat and drink. You read a book for a little while. And as you read, so from time to time, you notice your eyes beginning to get heavy and sleepy, and your body wanting to relax. And so you place your book down, close up the tent, and to the sounds of the forest, you settle down, you drift and float, deeper and deeper asleep, drifting and relaxing, deeply asleep into slumberland. Before we begin, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as this story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you find yourself walking along a bridal way through the countryside, heading towards the magical woodland. On either side of you are tall hedges separating you from the fields beyond. You can feel the gentle weight of the backpack on your back, the warmth of the midday sun, and the slight breeze as it tickles at your face. 
The bridal way has been well-worn, dry, muddy and stony tire tracks, and a thick, grassy mound down the centre of the path. As you comfortably walk along this path, you can hear birds singing in the hedgerows, and occasionally you can catch a glimpse of birds as they dart in and out of those hedges, flying with almost impossible skill as they dive into those hedges to perch deep inside the mess of leaves and branches and exit equally as swiftly. You gaze up and notice a few white candy floss clouds crawling peacefully across the pale blue sky. While looking up towards the sky, you can notice a large bird of prey slowly circling in an updraft of warm air, gazing down on that field below. You try to take a closer look at that bird, trying to identify what it is. Perhaps it's a red kite. Maybe it's a buzzard. You look closely at the tail, the shape of that tail as it glides in the updraft, the markings on the underside of its wings. Watching how peaceful and graceful that bird looks as it quietly circles overhead. After watching the bird for a while, you continue your journey towards the entrance to the magical woodland. Aware of the sounds of each footstep that you take, as you walk along that central mound, through wild grasses, tall daisies and dandelions. Occasionally you knock a dandelion puffball, dispersing many tiny wispy parachutes of seeds around your feet, some being captured by a random flurry of wind as you watch the delicate travellers being lifted high into the air as they float and dance with the air currents until they drift out of sight. With each gentle breath of wind you can smell the fragrant, sweet, honeyed aroma of oilseed wafting from nearby fields. The closer to the woodland that you walk, the more you can notice woodland birds singing, and the increased sound of rustling branches as the wind gently blows across the tops of the trees. As you reach the edge of the woodland, the hedgerows give way to trees, and you can see between the hedges and the trees into the fields on either side of you, noticing that on one side there looks to be slender green leaves stretching delicately up from the dirt, and a few rabbits nibbling at those leaves before they flash their tiny pom-pom-like white tails, making a few hops, and then settling down into another meal. And many birds walking around the field pecking at the soil. Looking the other side, you can see a field of the most vivid yellow oilseed plants, with their clusters of delicate-looking tiny four-petaled flowers atop sturdy 
green stems. You walk into the magical woodland, the sounds around you changing almost in an instant. The air becomes still as you meander through the dry, earthy tang hanging between the trees, with the soft, cracking, crunching sound of leaves and twigs beneath each gentle footstep. Birdsong echoing through the woodland, while at the same time there seems to be a certain dullness to other sounds, like the same trees which are allowing the bird's song to echo and reverberate through the woods, absorbs other sounds and quietens sounds from outside the woodland, creating a feeling of an unusual paradox where the woods are both awash with the echoey sounds of birds and yet seem to be quiet due to other sounds being reduced. While you gently walk slowly through the woodland, as you pass close to trees, you can occasionally find yourself running your fingers softly over the bark, feeling the texture of that bark beneath your fingertips. Noticing the different sensations depending on the tree. Some are soft and smooth, almost like running your fingertips over paper. Others are craggy and uneven. And yet more have bark almost peeling from the trees, sometimes revealing a beautiful mottled array of colours. As you continue to walk deeper into the woodland, you can notice the shafts of delicious sunlight dancing to the sound of the gently rustling canopy in the finely mist-filled spaces between the trees. You descend deeper and deeper into the woodland with each step. Then as you do so, the woodland darkens a little as you get further from where you entered. After walking for a while, catching a glimpse from time to time of colourful butterflies flying between the trees and landing on plants stretching up in the columns of light, you begin to hear the distant trickle of a tranquil stream. You walk in the direction of that gently flowing water. And as you do, so you can begin to smell the faint scent of that water in the air. While heading towards that stream, you continue to be observant of the woodland around you, noticing something out of the corner of your eye, you stop, hold your breath, trying to be as quiet as possible, as you carefully and slowly turn your head to look beside you. What you see evokes a feeling of pleasure and excitement, only revealed by a slight gasp as you try to be as discreet as possible. You notice the most beautiful young tawny owl, its fluffy downy feathers dappled with the faintest hint of brown. Its gentle gaze following you 
as you slowly move into position to photograph that young owl, looking like a soft puffball of fluff. While taking a few photographs, you discover that in the background, perched in the trees, camouflaged among the trunks and branches of the trees, is an adult tawny owl with its golden brown plumage watching you, watching that young owl. You slowly and carefully photograph that owl before continuing on your journey through this magical woodland. While continuing to walk towards the stream, you take a moment to appreciate how calm and relaxed this woodland helps you to feel and how healing woodland can be. As you arrive at the stream, you can decide to take some time to relax. You clear an area near the stream, erect a small tent, then dig a small pit a short distance in front of that tent. Build a campfire before gathering some wood and returning to your campfire. You light that campfire and once it seems to be burning at a comfortable, stable rate, you head into your tent and start to get some items out of your backpack. You take out some items to use for cooking food and heating a drink. And after you've eaten and made yourself a drink, you settle down into your tent. Here next to the stream, there is more sunlight, like a parting through the trees stretching for the length of the stream and about twice as wide as the stream. The tent is just in the shade, but as you look out of the tent you can see the sunlight glistening on the surface of the bubbling water of that stream. You can feel the most pleasant, cool breeze blowing gently into the tent and onto your face as you lay back and take a moment to relax. You close your eyes, feel that breeze on your cheeks, you can breathe in that fresh, cool woodland air and begin to drift into a reverie in your mind. And as you drift into that reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, aware of what your head is resting on, how comfortable your head feels, just resting there. You imagine the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing. You focus on what it's like for that relaxation to spread comfortably around your face, your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas soften and relax, before continuing to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips, then the upper back of your neck, around the sides of your neck and your throat, helping your jaw to relax and hang a little more loosely and comfortably as that 
relaxation continues to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens faster around the back of your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders as that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully and deeply. And as those muscles soften and relax, the relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way down to the tips of your fingers. And I don't know which arm will relax fully, fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, and as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, sides, and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed, so your mind begins to relax. And you can have a sense of a healing light, almost like imagining the magical healing power of the woodland passing down through your body, like Every breath you take, you breathe in a little more healing, calm and relaxation. This flows deeply throughout your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And you breathe out any stress or tension. And as you do this with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper into that reverie, imagining yourself floating on your back in the stream outside the tent, with your arms and legs hanging loose in the water, realizing that this is a stream of consciousness and becoming aware of how that consciousness is flowing past you, and your attention is drawn to things you notice in that stream of consciousness. You realize that you can't grab hold of anything your attention is drawn towards. All you can do is observe as that stream of consciousness flows by. So you relax back in that stream and allow it to just flow by while you float on that stream of consciousness, just enjoying and relaxing with the experience. And after being absorbed in your reverie for a while, you begin to become aware of your surroundings again. And you awaken in that tent, 
feeling so refreshed, revitalized and full of energy from this 20 minute or so moment of inner focus, taking that break from what you have been doing. And on awakening from this reverie, you discover that evening is setting in. You can notice the gently reddening sky and how the daytime nature sounds are fading away to give way to the waking evening animals. You leave the tent and decide to explore the evening woodland. As you set off from your tent, illuminating your way with a torch, you notice the way that the shadows of trees and branches travel and part around you, like shadow imps compelled to seek out the dark. You crunch your way through the undergrowth until you notice gently flashing green lights glowing in the distance, some remaining on for a while, others flashing in patterns, but most softly fading in and out of illumination. You walk towards those lights with curiosity. As you approach, you realise that they are on the edge of this magical woodland. You turn off your torch to better see the flashing lights. With the torch off, you discover how much more magical this woodland becomes at night. With the Silver shards of light from the moon creeping down through the branches of the trees to dance around the interior of the woodland. As your eyes continue to adapt to the dark, so the green glowing orbs seem brighter and more vivid. You rest against a tree for a while, just watching the beautiful spectacle unfold before you as the fireflies disperse. You head out into a meadow. You sit down in the meadow and notice the meadow is on a gentle hill. There is a single large oak tree in this meadow. You can see where the stream flows out from the woodland, meandering down the hill to a lake. In the dark, you can just about make out the hills on the horizon as the night sky is a little lighter than the silhouetted landscape in the distance. The full moon is casting a silvery light across the dark blue scene, offering a soft silver accent to the tops of the gently undulating blades of grass, and making the lake at the bottom of the meadow look like a pool of thousands of sparkling diamonds being jiggled in a black velvet bag. You gently lie back on the grass, feeling those soft, cool feathers of grass tickling beside your ears as you look up at the night sky, stars winking and wandering slowly across the heavens. And as you rest there, lying in this meadow, you see a shooting star streak silently across the sky, although you feel like it made a fizzing sound. You make a wish and smile.
As you lie there, you begin to think about how magical this meadow looks with the silver glow of the moon and the dark blue of the night. You can feel the cool nighttime breeze on your cheeks and the sensation of breathing in that fresh nighttime air. You close your eyes and imagine what it would be like if this was a magical land. Walking to that grand oak tree, running your fingers gently around the bark of the tree. Discovering a secret tunnel in the tree. Following that tunnel and finding a secret staircase with twenty steps. And then slowly and carefully descending those steps from twenty to nineteen, eighteen, seventeen. Sixteen, going deeper and deeper beneath that tree. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, following that staircase all the way down. Twelve. Eleven, ten, deeper and deeper, nine, eight, finding the air so still and quiet down here under the tree, seven, six, five, Four, approaching the bottom of the steps, curious what you'll find when you reach the bottom. Three, two, all the way. One, reaching the bottom of the steps and discovering a secret door. And taking a few moments before then, walking through that door and into a room of peace and comfort. And in this room you find a torch on the wall. And on lighting that torch, the room glows and reveals a golden scroll. You walk to the scroll and carefully lift the scroll off of the plinth that it's sitting on. The scroll smells like old books. As you Carefully open that scroll and are surprised that somehow you can read it. You read that scroll. And with a feeling of aha and a slight smile of understanding, you place that scroll back where you found it to be discovered again in the future before heading back out of this tree.
as the night time continues, so the air cools. Feeling refreshed, you awaken from your imagination and softly sit up. You notice in the distance white ring clouds glowing in the moonlight. As you watch those distant clouds, you realize they're heading towards you and gradually filling more of the sky. You decide that now would probably be a good time to head back to your tent. You walk across the meadow and back into the magical woods. You carefully navigate through the woodland and back to your tent. And once you're back at your tent, you douse the embers of your campfire before settling down inside the entrance to your tent. You relax, listening to the bubbling sound of the stream as you await the incoming rain. When you begin to notice those first few drops of rain, you close the entrance and relax back into your tent. Inside your tent, you decide to read for a while by the light of a torch you have hanging from the centre of the tent. As you read, so you can hear the rain getting heavier on the outside of the tent. Something about the rhythmic, almost constant pitter-patter of rain on the fabric of the tent makes it increasingly difficult to continue to focus on reading. While reading, your eyes keep wanting to close. The sound of the rain is making you feel sleepier and sleepier. It's making your eyelids heavier and heavier. You try in vain for a while to fight the unconscious urge to close your eyes and fall asleep. Determined that you will make it to the end of the chapter that you're reading. But eventually, you give in. You bookmark your page before putting that book down, 
turning off the light, and settling down into your sleeping bag. Snuggling down, almost like you're wrapped in a comfortably warm and pleasant cocoon. And in this warm and pleasant, relaxed state, you close your eyes, feeling so cosy as you listen to that rain peacefully dancing on the outside of your tent. and find yourself drifting and floating so deeply, so relaxed, asleep into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself even more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can allow your eyes to just gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself walking through that meadow. And as you walk through that meadow, along the edge of this magical lake, you can smell the different scents of the flowers around you in this meadow. Notice the slight breeze, perhaps on your cheeks, as you continue to walk gently and slowly through the meadow. And while walking through the meadow, just gazing around and taking in the nature, you can see butterflies flying from plant to plant. You can see bees flying from plant to plant. Perhaps you can hear some distant birds in trees and that sound of the grass and the flowers in the meadow gently blowing and moving in that breeze. Such a serene and relaxing environment. And as you continue to walk through this meadow, so you have a sense like you're feeling deeper and deeper relaxed. That kind of relaxation that you experience as you walk out in nature and become so absorbed in that nature that any negative thoughts or any worries seem to just fade away gently. And you can hear the sound of the water of the lake lapping onto the shore. And you can walk closer and closer to that shore. Ambling along the shoreline. The water lapping so gently. The beauty of that meadow the distant trees of woodland and the blue sky overhead. And you continue to wander along the edge of this lake, 
and from time to time you find a flat stone on the ground along the edge of the lake. As you pick the stone up, you wash it off in the shallow water at the edge of the lake, feeling the coolness of that water around your fingertips, your hand, and that slight abrasiveness as you use your thumbs to rub any soil off of the stone before you step back, adjust your stance, and then throw that stone, skimming it along the surface of the water, each time counting how many times the stone bounces before plopping in and sinking below the surface. And then continuing to walk mindfully around this lake. And the lake has just gentle, soft waves rolling into the shore. And after some time, ambling around the lake, you decide to just take a few moments break and rest a while. And you sit down on the meadow on the shore of this lake. You place an item of clothing wrapped up like a pillow. You rest yourself back in that meadow, resting your head onto that item of clothing, feeling the way that your head sinks gently into that and is supported so comfortably by that item of clothing. You gaze up towards the blue sky and out of your peripheral vision you can see the distant trees of the woodland and you can hear that lake at your feet just lapping onto the shore and your eyes gently blink shut and you begin to drift into the most pleasant reverie. And as you drift into this reverie, you have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing what your head is resting on, how your head is supported gently in place. The comfort in and around your head as it just gently rests there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing. Drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take. Before slowly carefully, softly moving your awareness around your face. And you allow yourself to focus on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks, having the muscles in these areas Soften and relax so gently. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax. Deeper and deeper.
noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension, or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. And you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth. Relaxing your lips and your jaw. Relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck. Around to the back of your neck and around your throat. As your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable. That relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and your upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or perhaps the front of your shoulders. As that Relaxation progresses around your back and your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully, deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can Begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way to the tips of your fingers. I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will Relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, through your sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed, while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind begins to relax. you can begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead, enveloping your face and head with healing deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing peace and calm, spreading that healing restorative, recuperative light down through your body, breathing in healing, calm relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck as it spreads down with each breath that you take, spreading down to your shoulders and around the back of your neck and gently down into your arms gradually continuing that flow of healing light all 
the way down to your fingertips. And with another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation as the light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into the reverie. And as your mind drifts deeper and deeper into the reverie, so you can feel the warmth of the sun on your cheeks as you continue to rest there and the sound of the lake lapping on the shore. And while resting there, drifting in a peaceful reverie, you almost seem to lose track of time. You stop being aware of how much time is passing, unsure whether one minute has passed or one hour has passed almost like drifting into a state that seems so timeless. Almost as if this moment is on a loop, and so you're unaware of how long is passing. As if you're pausing time here, now. And with that sense of time pausing, aware of the gentle lapping of the water, the feeling of the breeze on your cheeks, the warmth of the sunlight, the sound of the meadow around you, the very distant rustling leaves of trees. You find yourself just drifting deeper and deeper into the moment. You have this sense like you're connecting on some deeper, perhaps more profound level with this world around you, almost like something about the deeper you go, the more connected to the world you become, and the more connected and in tune with the world you become, the deeper and more relaxed you go. Connecting, relaxing, Drifting, floating, deeper and deeper. And then after what seems like just minutes, but may well have been hours, you open your eyes gently. And as you open your eyes, you see overhead that the sun has almost fully set. And there's the most beautiful blanket of stars dancing to life in the sky. And the 
quality of the sound of the water has shifted and changed. As the temperature has changed around you. And there's the most comfortable slight coolness to the temperature around you. And you pick up your item of clothing that you were using as a pillow. And you pick up your belongings and you continue to walk around the lake. And as you walk around the lake, so you notice the way that the moonlight of the moon, which is just peeking over some distant trees, is starting to tickle the surface of the lake with silvery, sparkling light that's flickering and dancing so beautifully, almost like a million bells twinkling across that lake. Do you find something about this scene magical? as you continue to walk around the lake, walking through the meadow, which is now more illuminated by the moonlight than the sunlight, and is taking on the most beautiful, delicate blue hue, with a slight silvery glow, And then, after some time of navigating around this lake, and the last of the sun setting beyond the horizon, that last sliver of orangey, pinky sunlight fading to blue, you notice an incredible sight overhead. It's a strange aurora. And the more your eyes adapt to the dark, the clearer you can see that aurora dancing in the sky. The streaks of light, almost as if Curtains of light are being shaken out in the sky, undulating, almost pulsing, waving in the sky. And you watch in awe at the beauty of the lights as they dance in the sky overhead. And you're curious how this aurora is visible from here, a long way from the poles. And you sit down in the meadow along the shore of this lake, just gazing up at that aurora in the sky, almost transfixed by its beauty and its unusualness. And then you notice a slight splashing, sploshing sound from the centre of the lake. You look over towards that sound, and you see some dancing, sparkling movement. As if there's a disturbance under the water, creating slightly more waves, twinkling in the moonlight. 
And as you continue to watch that movement in the water, you notice a woman rising up out of the lake, seeming to almost float up, seeming to defy gravity. And she rises up to her waist. And in the moonlight, she seems to almost be glowing. And you watch as this woman seems to look over in your direction. And then as she looks in your direction, she reaches out a hand as if to beckon you to stand. And so you stand up. You walk to the shore of the lake. And as you arrive at the shore of the lake, so you hear a gentle rumble. An almost inaudible rumble, as if it's a rumble through your body, so low and deep and comfortable. You notice the surface of the water rippling and vibrating and then seemingly falling away. And between you and that lady of the lake you see the ground lower down forming a staircase to a chamber deep under the lake. And the lake water is pouring over the three sides, the two sides either side of the staircase, and pouring over almost at the foot of the woman stood there into the space made by that lowering staircase. And the Lady of the Lake beckons for you to descend that staircase. And so you carefully walk over to the staircase, taking a few steps forward. You can hear that water flowing down the walls of this path down into that chamber. You shine a torch down from the edge of the staircase and you count twenty steps. And you begin to descend, stepping on step twenty, slowly, carefully, stepping on to nineteen, heading down to eighteen. And seventeen, having this sense of becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience. As you step onto step sixteen and fifteen and fourteen, slowly, carefully, softly descending with the sound of the water flowing down the walls around you, and the sound almost like a waterfall in front of you, becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience. Thirteen, twelve, eleven, all the way deeper and deeper, Noticing the way that you feel deeper absorbed and more relaxed with each step that you take, and a sense of excitement and curiosity, that sense of wonder at what you'll discover in the chamber down there. Stepping onto step ten, 
nine, eight, slowly, deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience, seven, six, five, relaxing so peacefully and comfortably, stepping onto step four, three, two, and then stepping off the bottom step, one, and as you step off that bottom step, so you're faced with the waterfall from the lake, as the water in front of the woman above you is pouring down into this gap. And you can see that beyond the water is a very dimly illuminated chamber. And so you step through that waterfall into the chamber. And at first you have this feeling like this is almost a room of nothingness like there's an unusual feel to this room, a curious feel, a feel of pleasure and relaxation and comfort and safety, while also having a feeling of curiosity and wonder about what you'll find here. and a strange feeling of timelessness, as if time in this chamber stands still, as if here there's no past, no future, just now. And in this room, you feel that deep sense of comfort and relaxation and that stillness setting into your mind and body. You look around this room and have a sense that you're drifting deeper and deeper into the experience with each step that you take, as if stepping deeper into the room takes you deeper into the experience. And while you enjoy this peace and calm, you look around you, trying to find what's in this chamber, and there's just a general faint glow, so it's not entirely dark no evidence of exactly where that glow is coming from. And as you look around you, you eventually discover that at the far wall is a plinth leaning against the wall. And on this plinth is an old book. And this old, large book seems almost like it's only just been made. As if perhaps time really is standing still here. It looks ancient and yet new at the same time. The front cover is ornate. and looks like a lot of Time and care went into designing and creating this book. And you open the book. And you find the first page blank. You turn to the second page and the third page and the fourth page. And every page that you turn, you find is blank.
and you're curious about why the pages of this book are blank. And when you get to the last page, you find that that too is blank. And curious, you turn the book over. And you start going through those pages from the back to the front. Only this time, you see something on those pages that almost brings a comfortable, pleasant tear to your eye. That kind of tear that you can get when you've discovered something profound in a wisdom, new knowledge and learning. A deep aha moment. And you keep turning the pages and you see with every passing page that it seems to make perfect sense to you. This explains the Lady of the Lake, her role, why she revealed this to you, the aurora overhead and the connection with you as a being, and your inner wisdom. And you find this so incredibly profound, that feeling in your stomach of knowing you've discovered something that you really want to share, that no one else is aware of. that you almost feel compelled to keep looking through this book, turning those pages, seeing what's on each page, how each page relates to you, and this knowledge you're gaining that you'll be able to share when you leave the meadow, and how this knowledge will transform you positively in ways you know you currently are unaware of. That it's knowledge that's that powerful for you to digest and understand. That relates directly to those things that you want to change in life towards the life you want to have, to be helpful to others. And you know that this book teaches all this, almost as if communicating directly to you on an unconscious level, where you know what's on each page, but you know that you know what's on each page on a deep level. It just resonates and seems to make sense. And after going through this book from back to front and realizing that when you try and go through it from front to back, pages are blank, but when you go through it from back to front, it all makes sense, and after gaining that knowledge, you head back out of the chamber, back up those steps back to the shore of the lake, and as you turn around, hearing that low rumble that's almost not even a sound, you notice those steps rising, forming the base of the lake again, and the lake continues to flow like normal, 
and that lady of the lake, with a wry, gentle smile, lowers back down beneath the surface of the water. And within moments, it's as if that moment had never even happened. And you set up a tent in the meadow near the lake shore. You settle down in that tent, preparing to drift asleep for the night. And your thoughts as you drift asleep are full of processing in a wisdom and wonder, that deep knowledge, a curious experience that you had. And while processing that, you drift and float asleep. finding yourself easily and effortlessly, honestly and fully drifting asleep, deeper and deeper relaxed, knowing your process, your day's learnings in your dreams, integrating those learnings into who you are as a being, as your mind and body relax and you drift and float so peacefully, so comfortably asleep into slumberland. Before we start the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself even more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can just let those eyes gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself walking through a magical evening woodland, gently illuminated by the dancing light of the moon and the occasional silvery speckles of light in the moonbeams. You can hear the sounds of the evening woodland enveloping you, the distant sound of an owl hooting, the gentle scurrying sounds of small mammals in the undergrowth, perhaps noticing the sound of a squirrel not yet settled, finding its way home through the canopy above, and the soft rustling of the leaves as the wind gently tickles at the tops of the trees. As you continue to walk through the woodland with the soft crunch of each step, navigating your way through the silhouetted trees, you can smell the slightly damp, woody, fresh nighttime air, finding something about that scent calming. As you head further into the deep, dark, relaxing woodland. You rely on your peripheral vision, finding that you're more able to see the environment around you out of the 
corner of your eye is in the dark than what you can observe directly in front of you. Although the longer that you're out here in the dark, the better adapted to the inky blackness your eyes become. As you navigate through the woods, you have your hands gently out in front of yourself. And you move your hands around carefully, working almost like the way that cat's whiskers work to feel and sense the world around you. Touching branches and moving them aside as you approach, occasionally softly touching the trunks of trees, feeling the sensation of the cool, damp bark under the fingertips. You can hear the soft sound of each footstep pacing over the woodland floor as the dancing moonlight continues to shift and move with the swaying of the branches. As you near the exit of this magical woodland, so the sound of the ocean increases. You can see the moonlight creeping into the woods from in front of you, catching a small glimpse of the patchy sky. You walk out of the woodland and find yourself in a meadow on top of an undulating cliff, overlooking the most beautiful nighttime ocean. The taller grasses and flowers stroking your legs as you walk closer to the cliff edge. The moonlight tinging the scene before you with silver as the grasses ripple and wave in unison with the wind like the surface of a calm, gently undulating ocean. As you near the cliff edge, so the sound of the ocean increases. You can hear those waves crashing onto the beach below. A short walk along the cliff, you find a bench. You rest down on that bench, and while you sit here, you can feel the breeze on your face. You can smell that fresh, salty air of the sea and notice soft flashes of lightning on the horizon. A short distance along the cliff from the bench, you notice a lighthouse and see the way the light is scanning the sea swings around towards the cliff face, passes over where you're seated, and continues to scan around the land and then back out to sea again. You can have this feeling like the storm is slowly moving towards the shore, but for now it seems a long way off. So you decide to just relax back on that bench, take some deep, comfortable breaths of that fresh, cool, nighttime air, feeling that air pass in through your nose, across the roof of your mouth, and down 
into your chest. You take a few moments to get yourself comfortable and allow your eyes to close as you continue to breathe in that salty, fresh air and begin to drift into a pleasant reverie in your mind. And as you drift comfortably into that reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head. You can feel the breeze around your head. How comfortable your head feels resting there, perhaps noticing the finest tickle of salty sea spray swept up to the top of the cliff from the crashing waves below. You imagine the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing before moving your awareness around your face. You focus on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks, having the muscles in these areas soften and relax. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead, while the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to also relax and you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth relaxing your lips and your jaw relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck. Around to the upper back of your neck. And around your throat. As your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation will happen faster around the back of your shoulders or the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders. As that relaxation progresses around your neck, around your back, and around your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully and deeply. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can begin to Spread down the arms to the hands, all the way down to the tips of your fingers. And I don't know which arm will relax fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether you'll discover that both arms relax at the same rate and speed. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow gently down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes.
and as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed, so your mind begins to relax. And as the beam of light from the lighthouse passes across you, you can feel that light on your face. Notice the gentle light in your inner experience. And you can have a sense that this light is passing a healing light into and through your body. Almost like imagining the magical healing power of nature and your connection with nature around you, passing that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body, like discovering that every breath you take, you breathe in a little more healing, calm relaxation, which flows deeply throughout your body, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, and you breathe out any stress or tension. You can hear those waves rolling in and out, like the breathing is synchronizing with those waves, breathing in that healing and well-being, and breathing out any stress, tension, discomfort or dis-ease from within the body. And as you continue to do this with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie, imagining yourself taking a canoe out into that stormy ocean. And as you drag that canoe towards the water, you find yourself knocked back. You push on, however, bracing yourself against the waves as they approach. And those waves push on you, but you hold firm, braced with each knock. learning to move with those waves as they roll in onto the shore, to be able to pass that wave line. You continue to push through those waves, bracing, relaxing, making slow progress at first, until you clear the breaking waves. And once you clear those breaking waves, you climb onto the canoe and sit in the canoe. You paddle a little further from the shore. You can hear the breaking waves behind you as your canoe bobs up and down on the rolling waves away from the shore. You notice how much easier it is to manage the canoe here, away from the shore, where the waves are passing underneath you, compared to near to the shore where the waves were rising up, curling over and crashing onto the beach.
And once you find a comfortable spot, a short distance from the shoreline, you rest in your canoe and just enjoy the experience of letting your boat float, feeling the gentle rise and fall of the canoe, hearing the water lapping softly around the canoe, watching the way the moon's light shimmers on the surface of the ocean like a sea of sparkling diamonds and the interplay of the moon and clouds in the sky, with the storm clouds still off in the distance. And after being absorbed in your reverie for a while, you hear a gentle rumble of thunder and are aware that the storm is nearing the shore. You gently awaken on that beach, feeling so refreshed, revitalized and full of energy from this 20 minute or so moment of inner focus taking that break from what you have been doing. On awakening from this reverie, you can see that the storm clouds have gotten closer. The moon is now almost fully hidden behind the thick veil of cloud, with the slightest slither of moon peeking over the voluminous wall of cloud. You walk from the bench towards that lighthouse for sanctuary from the approaching storm. Its constant beam sweeping the landscape with comforting regularity. You can feel that the wind has begun to pick up, saline micro droplets peppering your face and the occasional drop of rain, the sounds of the storm closing in. And as you near the lighthouse, you appreciate its build quality. The lighthouse is made to withstand the most challenging conditions. As a beacon in the dark, resolute, faithful, unwavering. Something ships' crews could depend on to be there for them in their time of need. The rain suddenly increases, dozens of large drops exploding on contact with you every second, rain precariously clinging on to your eyebrows and those large drops massaging your cheeks. At the lighthouse, you carefully run your fingers around the white painted brickwork feeling the texture of the rain-soaked brick as you head around the lighthouse to find the door. You discover a large, solid, heavy red wooden door with a black iron knocker almost head height on the centre line of the door. You knock on the door and wait. After a few moments, you knock again. 
and still no answer, so you carefully open the door, saying hello. It doesn't seem like there is anyone in this lighthouse. You walk into the darkness and close the door behind you. Inside the lighthouse, the sounds from outside are more muted. You feel the walls searching for a light switch. You don't find one near the door. You can hear the rain pounding onto a small window. You carefully navigate in darkness towards that sound of the rain. You can just about notice the faint silhouette of objects on a ledge in front of the window, recognising what looks like a candle. You slowly reach for the candle, grasp that candle, and can feel that it is in a candlestick holder. You gently guide your hand down the candle and holder to the ledge and fill the ledge with the tips of your fingers. As you feel that ledge, your fingertips tap a weighty small metal object. You take hold of that object which fits comfortably in the palm of your hand and recognise it as a lighter. You flick the lid of the lighter open and sharply push your thumb down on the flint wheel. With a small flash of sparks, the flame dances to life. You light the candle, gently illuminating the room with the faint flickering soft glow of light. You can smell the aroma of the flame and melting candle wax as you place the lighter in your pocket in case you need it later and pick up the candle in its holder, carrying it around to see if there are more candles to light. You light a few more candles around this room, noticing that the whole level is a single, circular room with minimal furniture. As you ascend, following the spiral staircase up to the next level, you find yourself instinctively counting the steps, and count twenty between the ground floor and the first floor. On this first floor, you light a few candles and notice that this level has a small but comfortable looking bed covered in thick blankets and an armchair situated near the fireplace. You head over to the fireplace, notice a small stack of chopped wood beside the fire. You place some of the wood into the fireplace. You use a tool you find beside the fireplace to create shavings from one of the logs. You place these shavings into the fireplace. Then you take the lighter and start that fire. At first, to help the fire along, you blow softly with long breaths into the base of the fire. Once the fire takes hold and you can hear the crackling, popping and slight rumbling sound of the fire, you take your outer layers off and hang them up. You place that lighter on top of a cabinet before standing in front of the fireplace to dry off. You face the fire at first with the heat from that fire warming your cheeks. You feel like your cheeks are probably going a rosy shade of red. After a short while you turn around and 
start to dry the back of your clothes. While facing this way, you can see the dancing shadows around the walls as the fire flickers in the fireplace. It takes a while, but once you're dry, you decide you want to continue to explore this lighthouse. You take a candle and climb to the next level, noticing that there are twenty steps again, but the room that you arrive on is smaller than the one below. This room seems to be like a library. There are curved bookcases around the walls filled with old-looking books. You head over to take a closer look by candlelight, pulling out a few books, smelling that musty old book's smell, flicking through the books, feeling the texture of the paper, the sound each page makes to turn, the weight of the book while reading, eventually finding a first edition book you decide you're curious to read, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Carrying that book, you head over to the staircase and continue to ascend. You climb those steps to the next level. Each level seems to be a single room, and each room seems to be slightly smaller than the size of the previous room. You continue up through the rooms until you reach the top of the lighthouse. The room just below the top floor is sparse. It has a wooden floor, a few coat hooks, and clothes storage spaces around the outside of the room. There is a yellow weatherproof suit, consisting of a large yellow hat, large yellow coat and trousers, and large blue boots. The hat seems to be able to clip under the chin so that it won't blow off in strong wind. Unlike the other floors, this floor doesn't have a spiral staircase. It just has a floor-to-ceiling staircase which rises up to a hatch. You climb the stairs to the hatch, unbolt the hatch and push it open as you climb. You find that you're inside the light dome. As the light is turning towards you, you close your eyes. The light and the warmth given off by this light still feels intense. As the light passes, so you open your eyes again and look around. You notice that this dome is like a domed greenhouse. There is a glass door leading out to a narrow balcony around the outside of this light. The balcony has a high wire safety fence going around the whole perimeter. You can hear the heavy rain pounding on the glass dome, the sound of the wind and the crashing sound of the waves some distance below. The light comes around again, so you close your eyes. After the light has passed, you head back down the hatch and change into the waterproof clothing. You leave the candle in that room, head back up through the hatch to the light. Once in the dome with the light, you go to the door and open it to experience the weather up here. You hold on to a rail. As you 
get buffeted by the wind and rain. You can see the sheets of lightning illuminating the night sky, and hear the distant rumbles of thunder seeming to almost envelop you. You head back into the lighthouse, close the door in the dome, head down the hatch, closing the hatch behind you, change out of these weatherproof clothes and begin to descend the steps with the candle and the book, heading back to the cosy room with the fireplace, comfy seat and that bed. When you're on the floor above the one that you need, you pass through the door to the steps, ready to walk down those steps, and the movement of air from opening the door blows out your candle. You left your lighter in the room one floor down and so can't relight that candle, so you gently hold the rope which is being used as a handrail, and you decide to count your way down slowly and carefully to the next floor. Descending those steps from twenty to nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, slowly, carefully, softly, descending, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, following that staircase, all the way down, eleven, ten, nine, eight, beginning to notice the faintest glow as you descend and head around that staircase now able to see the merest hint of the steps and the staircase illuminated around you. Seven, six, five, four, approaching the bottom of the steps that glow increasing, now easily able to see where you're walking, three, two, one, reaching the bottom of the steps and heading into that room, You find that the room is as cosy and comfortable as you remember it. You light your candle, head down to the ground floor, make sure that the candles are out down there before going back to the cosy room, settling down for a bit in front of the fireplace in that chair will you take some time to begin to read that book. You can hear that storm outside, the rain on the window of this room, noticing the firelight flickering, occasionally hearing the low rumble of wind finding its way down the chimney, exciting the light of the fire as shadows dance around the walls. While reading, 
your eyes keep wanting to close. The sound of the rain and the distant storm is making you begin to feel sleepier and sleepier. And your eyelids begin to feel heavier and heavier. And you try in vain for a while to fight the unconscious urge to close your eyes and fall asleep. Determined that you'll make it to the end of the chapter that you're reading, but eventually you give in. You bookmark your page before putting that book down. You put out the fire so that all you can hear is the background sound of the storm outside. You head over to the bed snuggle down into the bed, ready for the best night's sleep. You blow out the candle, close your eyes and drift and float deeply and relaxed, asleep into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can perhaps shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself even more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can gently let your eyes close. And as this story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response, and as you relax, you can find yourself walking through a meadow along the edge of Loch Ness. And as you walk through that meadow, you can gaze out across the loch, Noticing that murky water, the waves on the surface of the water. You can see over to the other side of the lock, seeing the tall hills that flank the lock. The trees and the woodland rising up those hills. And dotted among those hills, you can notice the occasional house. And some houses looking quite grand, while others looking quite small and simple and cosy. And the weather currently is generally overcast. But occasionally there's glimmers of sun breaking through the cloud in grand shards of light. And as the shards of light strike the water, so they lead to the sight of sparkling rose of diamonds on top of the waves. And you can feel the cool breeze against your cheeks as you walk along the edge of the lock through this meadow. You can see butterflies flitting from flower to flower. The way the breeze blows the grass, creating ripples of waves throughout the meadow, and a gentle distant 
rustling of the leaves of trees. Occasionally spying birds circling overhead. As you continue to amble along, gently, slowly, relax, just walking along in your own world, gazing out across the lock, curious whether you'll ever be fortunate enough to spy Nessie, or whether you'll see something which looks like Nessie, but you'll know that it's not and perhaps even take a photograph, knowing that you can joke with people about how you saw Nessie, and then explain to people what it really was that you saw. And you know, sometimes there are creatures in the lock, which as they swim at the surface, can look like the humps described for the Loch Ness Monster. Sometimes the ripples from a passing boat can resemble a creature travelling down the lock. Sometimes silhouetted birds with their curved necks in small flocks on the water can blend together. And sometimes it's difficult to gain a sense of perspective. And so the birds may be nearer to the shore than they look in a photograph. Making it look like there's a curved necked monster further out in the lock. When actually it was some birds silhouetted nearer to the person taking the photograph. Sometimes it can just be the stump of a tree floating through the water. Occasionally rolling over and perhaps a branch on that stump rises above the surface. And people see this rising neck-like structure coming out of the water and interpret it as being Nessie because in the location they're primed to want to see what they think they want to see and you're aware of this and you're reasonably confident that there is no monster in this lock. You've heard all the stories, but you know that if there was one single monster in this lock, then the stories over the hundreds and hundreds of years would be about that same monster. And so the monster would either be very, very old. Or the stories must be incorrect. Because you know that there'd be no way that a single monster could be in this lock. But if there was multiple monsters here, then sightings would be considerably more frequent. 
so taking a very analytical look at it. You're confident. This is just a large lake. With no large animal within it. But you find the idea intriguing and curious and a fun idea to think about. And a part of you, almost like a, a childlike part of you, really wishes that the lake would contain the Loch Ness Monster. And that by chance you would be the one to see it. And so you continue to walk through this meadow along the edge of the lock. Gazing around. Taking in the environment. Until after some time of walking. Urquhart Castle is still some way off in the distance. You decide now would be a good time to take a break. And so you sit down on that grass near to the shore. You have yourself some food and some drink and still feel that cool yet comfortable breeze on your face. And as you rest there, you look across the surface of the water. And find that those waves rolling in and lapping on the shore are almost hypnotic, almost mesmerizing you, feeling those eyes getting heavier and heavier with each wave that rolls in. As your eyes track the waves to the shore, and after a wave has rolled onto the shore gently, your eyes move back to the next wave back and follow that into the shore. Looking out and back, out and back, with regularity. Until eventually as the eyes look back, they close for a moment it takes a moment to realise that your eyes are still closed. You open your eyes and look out and back, out and back. Until the eyes close again. And you find yourself drifting and floating inside your mind into the most peaceful, the most comfortable reverie. You begin to have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing what your head is resting on as you lie back onto the ground. Noticing how it's gently supported in place, feeling almost like it's resting on a cushion of grass. Being aware of the comfort in and around your head as it rests gently there. 
having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take. Before you slowly and carefully move your awareness around to your face. Focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face. Your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas soften and relax deeper and deeper. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax. Deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. And you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips and your jaw, relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around the back of your neck and around your throat. And as your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. I don't know whether that relaxation will be happening fastest around your shoulders or in your upper back, or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders. As that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully, deeply, and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way down to your fingertips. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs, to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed while you drift into the most pleasant sleep. 
so your mind begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead, enveloping your face and head with healing, deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing peace and calm, spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body. Breathing in healing, calm relaxation. And breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders, around the back of your neck and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way down to your fingertips. And with another in-breath, healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation. As the light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie. Finding yourself aware of the sound of the water gently lapping onto the shore. Aware of the feeling of the breeze on your cheeks. The slight warmth of the sun. At the times when it breaks through the clouds. Distant sounds of birds overhead. Feeling of the grass beneath the fingertips and the palms of your hands. And the way your body just feels so supported in place by that meadow. Resting back on that cushion of grass. And then after a while of enjoying this break, drifting in this reverie. You slowly shift around a little and open your eyes and sit up. Initially everything seems a little brighter until your eyes adjust to the light.
you stand up and collect up your belongings and continue on your journey around the outside of this lock, your journey towards Urquhart Castle, while continuing to look out across the water for any signs of that mythical beast. And while you walk around the outside of the lock, you notice the occasional tree. And as you continue walking, those trees get a little more dense. Almost like there's a gentle, slightly open woodland along the edge of the lock. And so you cut through the trees. And while walking through the trees with the leaves rustling overhead and touching the trunks of the trees as you navigate around them and over their roots and over some slightly uneven ground, you can feel the bark of the trees beneath your fingertips. Notice the sensation of that rough bark of the trunks of the trees. Cutting through this light woodland. Before coming out the other side. Seeing that you're much closer now to Urquhart Castle. And you walk along through more gentle, grassy area. Aware of how the edge of the shore appears stonier and flatter here. Almost like you could take your shoes off. And if you could comfortably walk on those stones, you could... Walk into the shallow bit of water here. And you wonder how cold that water must be. And you've no plans to walk into water you imagine to be so cold. Even on a slightly warmer day like today. And as you near the castle, you notice something moving in the water. Initially it just looks like some ripples. And then it looks like something rises from the water and whatever it is looks like it's heading in the direction of Urquhart Castle and it passes by disappearing beyond Urquhart Castle and you're sure that it looked like some kind of a creature with a long neck at least one hump, if not two. And a lizard-like face. You're unsure whether that was just you seeing something, just making an interpretation of what it was that was really there. You know you saw something but it may just have been some wood floating past. Or maybe it was something else. 
But you don't believe that it would be the Loch Ness Monster. And you sit down on the bank again. This time gazing out across the lock. Trying to catch a glimpse of what it was you just saw. And after a short period of time, the most incredible thing occurs. You see what looks like some kind of a monster heading towards you on the shore. And as it gets closer and closer, the more aware you are that it isn't mistaken identity, it isn't just a branch on the water. And as it arrives near the shore, so you feel yourself holding your breath for a moment. as it towers above you in height, the lower part of its body still in the water, its tall neck towering up into the air, its head looking down at you. And then you feel this sense, as if it's trying to somehow get into your mind, And as it seems to be trying to access your mind, almost as if it's trying to communicate from mind to mind, you start to feel a gentle, euphoric state of pleasure and a deep focus and a tingling through your body, almost like somebody's stroking gently down your back. And then you start to have visions and recognize that this Loch Ness Monster is projecting thoughts into your mind almost as if to try to communicate and share knowledge with you. And you start to feel this sense like you're supposed to count back from 20 in your mind to focus and deepen this connection. And so you imagine in your mind's eye the number 20. And then you imagine erasing that number as if rubbing out a number written in chalk on a blackboard. And then seeing the number 19 written on that blackboard in your mind and having a sense of that number being gently rubbed out. And then seeing the number 18 drawn onto that blackboard. And then gently and softly being rubbed out. Going deeper and deeper with each number. Seeing the number 17 written onto the board. Then going deeper as that's rubbed out. And then the number 16. And that's rubbed out. And then the number 15. And that's rubbed out. 
And then the number 14. And that's rubbed out. And then the number 13. And that's rubbed out, going deeper and deeper. And then the number 12. And that's rubbed out. And then the number 11. And that's rubbed out. And then the number 10. And that's rubbed out, going deeper and deeper, going all the way inside. And then the number 9. And that's rubbed out. And then the number 8. And that's rubbed out. And then the number seven. And that's rubbed out. And then the number six. And that's rubbed out. Going deeper, more profoundly into this pleasant reverie. And then the number five. And that's rubbed out. And then the number four. And that's rubbed out. And then the number three. And that's rubbed out. And then the number two. And that's rubbed out. And then the number one, deeper and deeper, and then that's rubbed out. As you go deeper and feel that connection with Nessie, and you find now that Nessie can communicate with you so much easier and more effortless. And Nessie communicates through images, almost as if they are transmitting memories or images from their mind straight into yours. And Nessie transmits the images of their history. They transmit that there's an underwater cave system that's not yet been discovered. That comes out into the lock and following that cave system it heads towards the north of Scotland and comes out in the sea, off Stronsea, in the Orkney Islands. And Nessie shows you that north of Scotland is a large community of plesiosaurs which live in the cold sea. And they're very long lived with slow metabolisms. And have adapted and evolved to the cold water. And they generally live quiet lives. And very slow moving lives. And they live very long lives with their slow metabolisms. And they can spend very long periods of time underwater 
without requiring surfacing. And they only give birth about once every decade or so. With each female giving birth to a handful of young plesiosaurs. And there's cave systems heading to many lakes around Scotland and Norway. And the female plesiosaurs, when they're due to give birth, find their way through those cave systems back to the relevant lake when they give birth to those young plesiosaurs. They look after those young for a few weeks until they're large enough to be able to head back to the open ocean. And then the mothers guide the young back through the cave system, back out to sea. And the young will remember the routes back through the caves to the various lakes. And decades later, the mum will do the same again. And after many decades, the children will be old enough to have their own children. And then they will do the same themselves when it's time to give birth. They'll head back through the cave systems to the various lakes They'll give birth to their own young. And Nessie shared this insight and wisdom, this knowledge of their lifestyle, of how they have been around for so long. That it isn't just a single monster, it isn't just a single plesiosaur, which has been somehow in this one lock all this time. It's perhaps a single plesiosaur for many, many decades, making occasional appearances. But every 500 years or so, it'll be a new plesiosaur. which is the offspring of one which came before. And they only appear for a very short period of time before disappearing again for a decade or more. And after Nessie transmitted all this information almost psychically from mind to mind. They head back into the deeper water and you see some small plesiosaur heads bobbing around near their mum. She dives back down 
below the surface and they'll disappear off and you start to drift out of this reverie out of this almost psychic connection that you had and you notice the clouds tumbling over the tops of the hills on the other side of the lock you can see the rain coming in you can hear the faint rumble of a distant storm beginning to brew and so you head round to the castle you head into the ruins of Urquhart Castle you find sanctuary in these ruins you set up a small camp under the ruins of the floor overhead you can see out across the lock through the ruins and you hear that rain arrive and see the rain striking the water Initially, just the occasional circular splash of rain, and then a patchwork of circles from the rain as it strikes those waves in the water, breaking up the waves, making the water seem more choppy. As the breeze picks up a little bit more while the storm rolls in noticing a flash of lightning the way it illuminates the stone on the inside of the castle lighting a small fire to keep yourself warm that's just protected enough from the elements that it keeps dry but you can't hear that fire over the sound of the storm overhead that's rolling in you set up a place to sleep tucked up against the wall nice dry spot feeling so comfortable feeling the gentle warmth of the fire aware as the storm's rolling in that night time is rolling in faster as deep darkness sets in across the lock the only illumination being the glow from the fire and the occasional illumination from lightning and relaxing back onto that bed which you've made so comfortably wrapped and snuggled up into a sleeping bag You drift and float so peacefully and so relaxed, asleep, finding yourself drifting deeper and deeper, asleep, drifting and floating, deeply relaxed into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself more comfortable. And when you are ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths 
allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself on the edge of the Australian outback walking in the heat of the midday sun to a four by four. You climb into the vehicle, settle comfortably into the driver's seat and start the engine. Turning on the air conditioning, you feel the comfortable temperature begin to wrap around you like a cool blanket as you set off on your journey. Your vehicle drives so smoothly along a stony dirt track across the reddened soil as you head away from civilization and out into the wilderness. While driving, you can hear the crunching sound of the loose stones under the wheels. You can see the blue sky overhead, with the occasional wispy cloud hanging like silk high in the atmosphere. It seems to only take a short period of time for the nearest town to already be over the horizon behind you, as you continue to travel deeper and deeper into the desert. Once the vehicle has cooled down to a comfortable temperature, you turn off the air conditioning and open the car windows feeling that air blowing from both sides into your face, tickling your cheeks and ruffling your hair, breathing in that fresh, clean air as you continue to drive deeper and deeper into the outback. While driving, you Look around at the passing scenery, at tall trees, short trees, and clumps of shrubs and grasses, with some distant rock formations. The day continues to progress as you continue to drive. The driving almost becomes monotonous as you watch the same scenery pass you by, mile by mile, hour by hour, heading deeper and deeper into the outback. After many hours of driving, the sun is beginning to set. You pull over and light a campfire near some large rocks. A container on the roof of your 4x4 four four opens into a tent. You set this tent up and head back to the rocks. Sitting on the rocks near the campfire, you cook, eat and have a drink while watching the most beautiful scene of that sky turning the most incredible shades of reds and oranges as the sun continues to drop lower over the horizon. Nighttime sounds of the desert start to come to life around you. You gaze up towards the sky with a sense of awe and wonder, as almost every part of the sky is coated with stars, like a painter has spray-painted into the heavens. 
you can see the dusty, dense band of stars arching overhead. You set a camera up on a tripod and photograph the Milky Way stretching across the whole sky, listening to the gentle crackling and popping of the campfire. You can find yourself so transfixed on the experience that you barely register the incoming storm clouds. You notice flashing in the distance as lightning illuminates the bulbous clouds, glowing them shades of white and grey against the inky backdrop of the night sky, hearing the low, faint rumble of thunder. The storm seems to be rapidly approaching, so you find shelter in a small cave in the rocks. Shortly after settling comfortably into the rocks, placing an upright torch in the cave to illuminate the ochre walls, the first large drops of rain arrive, soaking and darkening the rock in the entrance to the cave, and making the campfire flame flicker and dance. As the storm intensifies, so you can feel the refreshing mist of rain filling the air, splashing up off the ground and finding its way delicately into the cave. The campfire outside the cave gets doused out by the storm as the thunder continues to roll in. You watch that majestic storm as lightning occasionally forks to the ground in the distance with the sky flashing and crackling, casting light upon the red, barren landscape. While the storm continues, you decide to relax comfortably in the cave. It seems like you might be here a while. You get a book out of your backpack, Frankenstein. Open that book at the bookmarked page and continue reading. As you read, so you notice random dark shapes in the night with the flashes of lightning, and imagine the poor monster from the book roaming alone among craggy rocks, mountains and forests on stormy nights like this, trying to find shelter, comfort and understanding. After reading for a while, the storm begins to subside, so you head over to your vehicle. You then head to the back of the vehicle, pull down a ladder to the entrance to the tent. Climb the ladder and settle into the tent. It's getting very late now, so with the sound of the storm fading into the distance, you close your eyes, take some deep, comfortable breaths, and allow yourself to drift into a pleasant reverie. And as you drift into that reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing what your head is resting on, how it is supported gently in place, the comfort in and 
around your head, resting there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath before moving your awareness around your face. Focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas soften and relax. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head relax also. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension. You continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth, relaxing your lips and your jaw. Relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around the upper back of your neck and around your throat. As your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens faster around the back of your shoulders or in the upper back, or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders. As that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully, deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can begin to spread comfortably down the arms to the hands, all the way to the tips of your fingers. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed, while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead, enveloping your face and head with healing, deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with 
healing peace and calm. Spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body. Breathing in healing, calm, relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders, around the back of your neck, and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way down to the tips of the fingers. And with another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation as the light journeys down. Around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow, with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie, imagining yourself waking from this cozy slumber, opening your tent to find yourself in a strange and beautiful world, a world which looks like a magical version of the Australian out back you fell asleep in. The night sky has moving, undulating, almost pulsating colours, dancing overhead under the backdrop of stars and the inky blackness beyond. You can notice the faintest glow from the light touching the red earth below and see soft glowing orbs of light rising up from the ground until they fade into darkness of the night and see the light comfortably pulsing in the trees, shrubs and grasses from the roots to the tips, just a slow and gentle pulse, almost like the heartbeat of this magical, mystical land. Watching as the light pulses along the roots visible near the surface of the desert pavement towards the trunk of the flora pulsing almost with the faintest hum the leaves twinkling like a thousand soft bells as they rustle in the breeze and seem to 
dissipate the pulsing light back out into the surrounding landscape. seeing a small grey-black marsupial smoothly scurrying over pebbles and sandhills and through the coarse grasses, almost in a slight blur like you're watching it on a video shot with the longer frame rate typically used for night photography, with the tiny animal jumping into focus each time it suddenly stops, surveying the environment for a moment before scurrying off in a different direction. Like the flora in this nighttime desert, the fauna also seems to glow with soft light. This small animal glowing slightly purple, leaving a purple light trail behind it as it moves, which gradually fades like contrails of planes in the sky with the most vibrant colour at the boundary between stillness and movement. As you gaze out across this landscape, so you notice there are many streaks of purple light crisscrossing the ground, as well as lights of various other colours, all looking like the trails of animals unseen, peacefully going about their lives on this magical night. while you watch this scene unfold around you, you begin to feel a deep connection with this land, almost like this magical version of Australia is always here. It just goes unseen to all but the few who really take the time to connect with the land honestly and completely absorbing themselves in the true, interconnected nature of all that is there, all that has been, and all that can be. After being absorbed in your reverie for a while, you drift and float into the most healing, restorative, recuperative sleep. As morning approaches, you can feel the light of the rising sun illuminating the tent, almost making it glow. You awaken feeling so refreshed and revitalized, ready for the day. You leave the tent and notice that it's already getting warm as the sun rises higher and higher into the sky. You have some breakfast, walk around and stretch your legs and pack away your tent before carrying on your journey. The journey ahead continues to be a long one. You drive deeper and deeper into the outback as the sun joins you journeying across the sky like a faithful companion lighting the way. The more you travel, the more you appreciate the environment around you, how harsh and difficult it 
must be to survive out here, how unforgiving this landscape can be and how important it is to respect this environment and be humbled by it. You observe how interconnected everything is. Driving through such a landscape gives you nothing but time to observe and learn. Out here, you are but a small speck in the vastness of this wilderness. You have one kind of intelligence, but the life around you has a deeper, more profound intelligence than you do about this location and how to thrive, adapt and survive in such challenging conditions. After a long drive, as the afternoon sun begins to slowly tuck itself behind the blanket of the earth, with the wispy clouds in the sky turning shades of pink, you arrive at your destination. On the bank of a newly refilled salty lake, as you get out of your vehicle, you can taste the salt in the dry air and hear the soft lapping of the water against the shore. You get a tent out of the back of your 4 by 4 assembling it just up on a small sandy hill by the lake edge. Light a campfire and place some of your items in your tent before sealing the tent up and going exploring. After being in your vehicle for so long, you enjoy finally taking time to stretch your legs and explore near this lake before the sun fully sets and you settle down for the night. You head over to a tall marble gum tree and run your fingers around its smooth white bark, finding that your fingertips brush off some of the red-brown flakes of bark. You can hear the leaves rustling above you in the breeze. Looking up, you notice the greyish-blue clouds of leaves delicately perched high up on the branches. As you continue to explore, walking mindfully over towards another tree which looks different, you reach out and run your fingers around the bark of this tree, discovering that the bark of this tree is very different to the last tree. You can feel the rough, fibrous, dark grey-brown bark of this tree and really notice the sensations of that against the fingertips. This tree isn't as tall as the last tree and seems to be covered in bright yellow flowers. As you walk around the tree, looking up at the flowers and bluish-green leaves, and noticing that the bark higher up appears smoother and more of a pinkish-grey, creamy colour, you notice your foot kick something. As you look down, you discover that this tree seems to have a swollen root crown and suspect, perhaps, that it's part of this tree's way of surviving in this environment. Wondering whether, perhaps, it's to store some water... You continue your amble around this shore of this lake and notice the sun has now set behind the horizon and so you don't have much longer to explore before you need to get back to your camp. You hear the 
distinctive, distant sound of a dingo and notice the nighttime sounds picking up around you. The sky very quickly begins to darken, with the moon's silvery light glistening off the lake water as it gently kneads the shore. The curtain of stars twinkling, almost seeming to be trying to communicate through their soft blinking in the night sky. You begin to walk back in the direction of the flickering campfire, seeing the faint glow of the front of the tent under the orange hue of the dancing flames, each footstep crunching underfoot. As you arrive back at your tent, you open the tent and comfortably settle down inside the entrance to the tent. You have a torch hanging up inside the tent, you turn this on, a comfortable brightness. Have something to eat and drink as you watch the flames flickering and dancing before you, with occasional pops and whistles and the crackling of that fire. The gentle lapping of the water on the shore and the sounds of nature enveloping you, the slight salty scent still hanging in the air. After relaxing for a while, taking in your surroundings, you decide to settle down for the night. You back into your tent, close the entrance to the tent. You can still hear the gentle lapping of the water, nature sounds and the sounds of the crackling and popping campfire. You can notice the campfires glow through the sides of the tent. You make yourself comfortable. You get your book out to read for a while before falling asleep. You pick up where you left off, reading Frankenstein, aware of the compassion you feel for this troubled creature. While reading about the monster's journey through cold and snowy mountains, you think about the juxtaposition between what you are reading in this book and your experiences here in the Australian outback, the mountainous, cold compared to the flat, hot desert. Both very different environments, yet both still challenging in their own way. As you read, so you begin to struggle to keep your eyes open. You find that your eyes keep wanting to close. Sometimes you discover that they had closed without you realizing. With each page that you read, you begin to feel sleepier and sleepier, and your eyelids begin to feel heavier and heavier, and you try in vain for a while to fight the unconscious urge to close your eyes and fall asleep. Determine that you'll make it to the end of the chapter that you're reading, but eventually you give in. You bookmark your page before putting down the book and preparing to sleep. You settle down, turn off the light and make yourself comfortable. Then to help keep your mind focused and to stop it drifting off to other thoughts ideas, worries or concerns, you imagine yourself at the top of a stone 
path with twenty steps leading down to a lush, beautiful country garden. You can see a myriad of colourful flowers filling the garden, vibrant green grass, trees and bushes, birds flying in and out of the bushes and trees, some bathing in a small pond, bulbous cotton candy clouds hanging in the rich blue sky. The glow of the sun comfortably warming your cheeks. You begin to descend those steps as you become deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience of drifting comfortably asleep from twenty to nineteen. Eighteen, seventeen, going deeper and deeper as you descend those steps into that beautiful garden. Sixteen, fifteen. Fourteen, slowly, carefully, softly, descending. Thirteen, twelve, eleven, all the way. Deeper and deeper. Ten. Nine. Eight. Slowly drifting asleep. Faster with each step down towards that garden. Seven. Six, five, as you start to smell the sweet smell of the flowers in the garden and watch the iridescent butterflies dancing from flower to flower, the bees crawling in and backing out of flowers the flowing of the grass in the gentle breeze and the background rustling of leaves. Four. Three. Two. And stepping off of the bottom step. One. Finding yourself walking along a path in this deep sleep garden towards the most comfortable looking sleepy bed at the back of the garden. And with each step that you take through this garden, so the sun sets and night time draws in. The daytime animals head to bed. The plants close their flowers for the night. The stars shimmer overhead. And you feel sleepier and sleepier, arriving at the bed, settling down comfortably in this bed, in your inner deep sleep garden as you find yourself drifting and floating deeply, relaxed, asleep into slumberland. Before we begin the story, 
you can take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself even more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can let your eyes gently close. And as the story unfolds, you can take a few deep breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself walking through a jungle one evening. As you quietly and comfortably walk through this jungle, you can be aware of the sounds around you the fading sounds of the daytime animals and the developing sounds of the evening animals. You can notice the faint sound of the leaves and branches of the trees rustling high overhead. As the wind blows gently over the tops of the tall canopy, very little light makes it to the jungle floor here, even at the height of daytime, due to the dense mass of leaves and branches overhead. You can occasionally hear the movement of animals creeping through the treetops, perhaps finding their way home to settle down for the night. There is a profound stillness to the air in this jungle which can give this place an otherworldly feeling. Among the dense trees you can see fireflies dancing in the diminishing light as the light from the day continues to fade. So you Light your way with a torch. As you move the torch around in the inky darkness, so the distorted shadows of branches, tree trunks and leafy plants dance around you. You continue to push on deeper, and deeper into the jungle. Brushing aside and hacking through leaves and small branches and trees which stand in your way, clearing a path before you. Occasionally you touch broad leaves as you move them out of your way, feeling the oily, waxy texture of those dense leaves between your fingertips. Other times you rest your hand on the bark of trees as you climb over obstacles in your path, aware of the rough texture under the palm of your hand and fingers, which add additional grippage to help you remain steady as you continue to navigate in the dark. While trekking deeper and deeper into this jungle in darkness, you notice how difficult it is to track time and to be aware of how far you have travelled. Everything around you in the darkness looks and sounds the same. Every direction seems to be the same as any other direction. You don't feel like you're getting any closer to anything or further away from anything like you might do when you normally travel somewhere.
from time to time as you walk. You check with a GPS device that you're still on track with where you're going. You follow the planned route deeper and deeper into the jungle, getting closer and closer to your planned destination. You don't know what you'll find at that destination. You've worked out that it should be the site of an ancient temple, but as no one has been there for at least hundreds of years, you only have the evidence you gathered to go on. There are no photographs or modern reports of this location. Mainly just myths and legends and stories told through the generations. Eventually, while walking, you notice that the ground seems to be lumpier than it has been for a while. You assume that perhaps you're closing in on the temple, and maybe these are the ruins of the vast city rumoured to have existed around the temple. You carefully navigate in the dark, over the rocky undergrowth, weaving between the trees, continuing deeper and deeper into this jungle. After some time longer, your torchlight catches a glimpse of the ruins of a stone wall protruding out from the jungle floor. You head towards that wall and can see more walls, including a corner wall, revealing the heart of the temple. Having arrived at the temple, you enjoy finally being able to stop and rest. The jungle has encroached around the outside of the ruins, but there is a little less foliage within the walls of these ruins. You light a campfire, its light illuminating the masonry, flickering and dancing the light gently tickling the jungle beyond the ruins. You set up a tent a short distance from the campfire, hang a torch inside the tent and settle down, feeling that pleasure of relaxing and resting your feet after a long walk. You have some food and drink before taking a few moments to write down your experiences so far, recording your journey, where you came from, the route you have travelled, how long it has taken you to get here, anything of interest which you have noticed on your adventure. You then decide to rest back a moment before exploring this location, and rest a little longer. You close your eyes, take a few deep, comfortable breaths, and allow yourself to drift deeper and deeper into that pleasant reverie. And as you drift into that reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing what your head is resting on, how it is supported gently in place, the comfort in and around your head resting there.
having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head, softening and relaxing, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take, before moving your awareness around your face. focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks, having the muscles in these areas soften and relax, relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. while the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can Pay attention to fading tension, or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. You continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth. Relaxing your lips and your jaw. Relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck, around to the back of your neck and around your throat. And as your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders as that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest softening and relaxing those muscles fully, deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way down to the tips of your fingers. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest. Whether it'll be the left arm left there relaxing faster than the right arm, or whether the arm that's right relaxes faster, or whether you discover that the arms relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper, relaxed, while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind 
begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead, enveloping your face and head with healing, deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing peace and calm, spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body, breathing in healing, calm relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing comfortably down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck, as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders, around the back of your neck and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way down to the tips of your fingers. With another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation as the light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie, imagining yourself waking from this cosy slumber, leaving the tent and seeing this landscape as it was centuries earlier, finding yourself in the temple, seeing an altar in the centre of this temple, and you can see someone performing a ritual. You watch and learn what they're doing. After you have observed the full ritual, you leave the temple and enter the city. It's night time and you can see the straight rows of houses and the market softly illuminated by torches flickering down the streets, with the jungle beyond the city boundary, seeing the night sky stretched overhead. You walk through the city, towards the towering jungle, looking out into the darkness, thinking about the future of this location, how the city will become abandoned and the jungle will progress into the city limits until one day there'll be no sign of this city remaining, just nature and hidden ruins. From the boundary of this city, you look back towards the temple, standing tall at the centre of this sprawling, ancient metropolis. You walk slowly back 
to the temple, seeing the dusty arc of the Milky Way reaching across the sky. Back at the temple, you head into your tent, lay down and slowly awaken from your reverie in your tent in the ruins. You leave your tent, aware that it is still night time and only a few hours have passed. You go over to your campfire and notice that by setting it up in the middle of the most clear area, you have placed it where the altar was in your reverie. You begin to recite the ritual you observed. As you speak in a calm and monotone voice, the campfire starts to crackle and pop. Then you notice the firelight dancing and spinning before seeming to take shape taking on the form of an ethereal dragon. You continue with the ritual as the spirit dragon begins to swirl around the fire, rising higher and higher up into the air. And then, almost as quickly as that dragon appeared, it fades away. As it does, so you hear a clicking and then gentle rumbling sound as the ground beyond the fire begins to move and ascend. You watch as the ground lowers, vines rip, mud falls down onto the descending ground. You notice that the ground isn't descending evenly. At first, all of the descending ground moves down evenly. Then a row of descending ground nearest to you stops about a foot into its descent. Then shortly after this, after the ground has descended about another foot, another row of ground stops descending almost like steps are forming, with the first step down being nearest to you. It takes a while of that ground slowly lowering for all of the steps to form. You look down the steps. You can faintly see that there appears to be a room down those steps. You light a torch from the fire and Walk around the outside of the area which has just descended. You try to see how far down the steps go and whether you can see into the room at the bottom. You decide that you can't see much from up here and so you're going to walk down those steps to that room. You try to count from the side of the hole how many steps there are for you to descend. You count twenty, head to the top step, and begin to slowly walk down those steps, finding yourself feeling a deeper sense of peace, calm and clarity with each step that you take. Stepping onto step twenty, then nineteen, down to eighteen, seventeen, becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step, sixteen, fifteen, Fourteen, slowly, carefully, softly descending. Thirteen. Twelve. Eleven. 
all the way. Deeper and deeper. Noticing the way your torchlight flickers on the walls and illuminates a short distance in front of you. Ten. Nine. Eight, slowly, deeper, and deeper absorbed in the experience. Seven. Six. Five, smelling a fragrant, relaxing, comforting smell coming from the revealed room at the bottom of the steps. Four. Three. Two, and stepping off of the bottom step. One, finding yourself walking into that room at the bottom of those steps. And as you walk into that room, you notice torches in torch holders on either side of the entrance to this room. You light those torches, watching them dance to life casting the most beautiful soft orange glow around the walls. There are two more torches on the far wall. You head over to those and do the same, filling in the darkness at the back of the room with that soft, gentle, comforting, glowing light. This room seems to have survived the encroaching jungle, with the room looking as it would have looked the last time it was sealed. Along the back wall of this room is a relief depicting a ritual. You recognise the beginning of the relief as being the above-ground ritual which you have performed. In the middle of the wall up against the wall is a stone table. On that table are some golden items. These items look as new as the day that they were created. The golden bowl on the table is filled with oil with purple, fragrant rose petals floating on the surface. Next to the bowl is a golden chalice containing a rich, dark red liquid, which looks like red wine. You can see on the relief, and you witnessed in your dream, that the final step in the ritual is to take a sip of that drink and sit on the throne-like chair in this room. You gently lift the chalice, and take a sip of the liquid. The liquid tastes sweet and pleasant. You place that chalice back on the table before sitting down, deeply and comfortably in that chair. As you sit in that chair, so you notice swirling colours and light in this room. The torchlights flicker as if there is a swirling breeze, yet you can't feel any breeze on your cheeks. You notice that spirit dragon swirling and forming in the middle of this room. 
Once fully formed, the dragon floats in the air, and in a deep, comforting voice, it begins to talk to you. You find that you can understand what it's saying. You have evoked me from my slumber, calling forth my magical powers to share with you. The wisdom and strength of the dragon. This temple was built on an intersection of ley lines, which makes the energy of those ley lines fall into a harmonic resonance at a frequency below consciousness. This frequency resonates at the same frequency the brain resonates when dreaming giving those in this location the power of time sight, the ability to see the past as it was in this location, and the future possibilities which may come to pass. Those people can then use these insights to advise and guide the community. You have seen the past as it was, and can focus on seeing the sprawling, infinite tendrils of the future branching out from this moment. You just have to sleep and dream, and I am formed from a spark manifesting from the energy in this location to communicate with those who summon me, created from the infinite wisdom and timeless moment to guide travellers on their quest for knowledge and wisdom. You find that as the dragon speaks, so you become transfixed on their voice, on their presence, and in the moment, curious what you'll learn from them here, and you have come here to learn, to gain knowledge of this location, and of those who once lived here. You came here to summon me, to see if the myths were true, to see if I existed and to see how the spirit of the dragon can infuse within you to help with your personal growth towards the person you want to become in the future. You want to see if I can show you your possible futures and help you to map out a path to follow. And the interesting thing about paths to the future is that they are uncertain. Every decision divides the path into new directions. So you can see the infinite possibilities of moments in time in the future. You can have an idea of the types of behaviours which lead towards those futures. But when looking from the present towards the futures, they become hazy the further you look. The dragon spirit then begins to guide you into a state of mind which helps you to see the network of future possibilities. While the dragon speaks, so a large tree begins to form in front of you, with its fine roots spreading out from the centre in all directions, dividing as they go, becoming increasingly complex, pulsing with light. And as those roots spread, so the branches grow and leaves fill the tree. The dragon explains that this is the tree of your life, 
The branches and leaves represent the life you will lead, while the roots represent all the possible paths available to you. You notice as you look closely at those pulsating roots that the pulsating light isn't just a light pulsing. It is like viewing a three-dimensional movie of your life from above as it unfolds within the strands of the roots, with every decision point leading to a strand of root branching off from the preceding root and forming more roots. The dragon asks you to think about the future you would like, Asking when you are old and looking back over your life, what do you want to recall? Who do you want to be remembered as? What do you want to have achieved? What do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to have been responding to life's challenges? How do you want to respond to opportunities which present themselves? As you think about these questions and other questions about who and how you want to be in the future, you notice that the pulsing light changes colour over patches of the roots. When thinking about the answer to the first question, all of those options in line with achieving that pulse a new colour. When thinking about the answer to the next question, that new pulsing colour narrows down. With the third question, it narrows further still. With each question, the area illuminated and pulsing with this new colour narrows. You notice that there are fewer immediate options for getting on the correct path. But as that path flows into the future, it widens as more paths contain the desired changes established earlier in the journey. Once all questions are asked and you have instinctively answered all of those questions, a clear path through the roots which fans out into all potential futures containing the desired outcomes that you want stabilizes and begins to glow white and pure. The pulsing of that white Pure light speeds up until the pulsing is happening so fast that the light looks steady and constant. At this point, the dragon circles the tree and descends to the floor, circling above the roots. It says to you to focus on the beginning of that light. Look at the point that illuminated root touches the tree. Focus on that spot. Hold all of your attention on that spot. They say they will count down from three and on the count of one you'll find yourself projected into that point you're focusing on, projecting into this path. Three. 
two, one, now. And on the count of one, you can find yourself projected into this pleasantly glowing, pure path, finding yourself seeing through your own eyes, hearing through your own ears, feeling what you will feel as you experience living this life as the you that you want to be. You have a sense of following this path over the coming weeks, then months, occasionally looking back at how things have progressed, following the path over the first year, seeing how far you have come and how different things are to how you expect they would have been had you not been following this path and a sense of following this path from one year to the next, often looking back at your progress, at what you have achieved, at who you have become and what you have been pleased to notice, finding milestones triggering that, reminiscing and discovering that you can and have always Keep these changes in mind honestly, fully and instinctively. After experiencing all of this, you find yourself projected back into the you in that chair. The light fades, the tree fades. The dragon says you have what you came here for, and they begin to fade. You find that you are in this room with just the jungle sounds from outside in the background, and silence from within the room. With the gentle flicker of light of those torches dancing on the walls, you ascend up the steps, and back out into the night-time jungle. As you leave the underground chamber, the steps seem to rise and seal behind you. You find yourself next to the crackling campfire in the ruins with little evidence of the experience you've just had. You can hear the jungle sounds around you, the crackling of that fire, and you can see the way the firelight is glowing around the trees and the crumbling stone walls. You head into your tent, thinking about the experience. It already is beginning to seem unreal. You take a few moments to write down and record your experiences, concluding the experiences from the whole day. And while thinking about what evidence you have for the reality of the experience, you begin to close your eyes and drift comfortably asleep. And as you drift asleep, you begin to dream to the sounds of the jungle and the crackling fire in the background. And as you dream, so you find yourself drifting in time. Not only do you see the paths laid out before you of this location, but you also see your own paths revealed below you, and the pure, white, glowing path. You instinctively descend into that path and explore that bright future, while drifting deeper and deeper asleep as you find yourself drifting and floating deeply 
relaxed, asleep into slumberland. Before we begin the story, you can just take a few moments to settle down comfortably. You can shift about a little if you need to, to make yourself more comfortable. And when you're ready, you can just let your eyes gently close. And as this story unfolds, you can take a few deep, relaxing breaths, allowing the out-breaths to be a little longer than the in-breaths. This triggers the body's natural relaxation response. And as you relax, you can find yourself climbing the few steps from the platform up into a train. And this train is spacious, with each carriage consisting of separate compartments for passengers. You look at the number of the carriage that you're on, and you realise your compartment is in the carriage in front of this one. So you walk along a corridor, heading to the front of this carriage. On the left-hand side of you are the compartments. On the right-hand side are large windows, separated from each other by thin, glossy beams of silver metal stretching up to the curved ceiling of the carriage. Each compartment has a narrow window and a door facing into the corridor. The window starts about the same height up as the windows to the outside, and they reach almost all of the way to the ceiling. While walking along the corridor, you can notice that most of the compartment windows have a blind pulled down, so you can't see into those compartments. Each compartment door has a number written on it. You walk the length of this carriage. At the end of the carriage, the corridor curves slightly left to a door in the centre of the end of the carriage, through to the next carriage. You walk through that door just as the train begins to leave the station. You can see the movement of the carriage that you're stepping into as you walk through that door and follow the corridor round to the right and continue along the corridor, seeing the station moving back past your right-hand side and then noticing the open countryside landscape appearing beyond the train station. After walking past three compartments, you read your compartment number on a door. You open the door and step into your compartment, closing the door behind you. The compartment has brown wood effect walls, ceiling and door, a dark velvety material blind currently lowered over the narrow window facing the corridor. There are seats on either side of the compartment, a wide seat on the left hand side stretching from the wall to the outside of the carriage over to the wall with the narrow window, looking out to the corridor. On the right-hand side, the seat stretches about two-thirds of the way to the inside wall, reaching to a narrow storage space, sink and worktop. The narrow storage space has a cupboard at the top, a mirror and sink indented into the space with a shelf which can be lowered across the sink if the space is required as a work surface. Below the sink is a small fridge in a cupboard. 
Above the seats is further storage space. Between the two seats is a table attached to the wall under the large window at the far side of the compartment, and on either side of the window are curtains, which are currently ruffled at both sides of the window, held back by large, well-polished metal hooks, big enough to make Captain Hook envious. In the corners of the compartment and above the seats are small lights, embedded spotlights above the seats, and small lights like metal tulips in the corners of the compartment which can have their beam directed to the desired location. The compartment is designed to be comfortable to sit in, to enjoy the journey, and then when you want to to go to sleep, you can unclip the table, fold up the long leg, lower the table down to a clip, placing the table in line with the base of the seats, fold out two small legs and then the seats fold out across the table, making the base of a bed with the perfect firmness and comfort. For now, you place belongings you have with you into the storage spaces, familiarise yourself with this compartment, and settle down onto the seat to the left, facing in the direction the train is travelling. You can feel the clickety-clack of the train as it travels on the track. You look out of the window over the wide, open countryside, watching as nearby trees and bushes pass in a green blur. Occasionally you find your eyes holding focus and tracking a tree or bush for a second or so, making it stand out momentarily in focus before it passes across your view and your eyes jump to the next object. Beyond the nearby trees and bushes which pepper the edge of the railway line are lush green meadows textured with patches of colour from wild flowers, with this flat landscape stretching off into the distance, almost looking like it is tinged with faint pale blue layers off to the horizon. You can see the blue sky and perhaps the occasional wispy cloud hanging overhead and notice how the layers of countryside pass at different speeds. With the foreground flashing past, the midground passing slower, and the distant background seeming to barely move. While gazing out of the window, over the meadows, you can notice about a dozen deer grazing, all huddled close together while they eat. You can see a large bird of prey circling high above the meadow. As you continue to gaze out of the window, you pass a meadow with a small bird of prey rapidly flapping its wings hovering in place, transfixed, staring down into the undergrowth, about to dive towards some unsuspecting creature. After looking out of the window for a while, you decide to rest back comfortably into your seat, relax and read a book. You get a book out of your bag, The Lord of the Rings. You Find your bookmarked page, open the book, and continue to read. You are reading from just as Frodo and the gang are leaving the Shire, looking back at the Shire and its inhabitants in the distance, before heading into the forest, uncertain at this point what their journey will bring. As you read, so you find your mind 
occasionally wandering and drifting inside to different thoughts and ideas. You wonder what this land would be like to traverse. You make a loose parallel of the landscape they travel through with the landscape you are traveling through. From beautiful countryside, into a forest, towards mountains, but instead of climbing over the mountains, you'll be passing through the mountains, finding yourself traveling through a beautiful snowy landscape. While your mind wanders, so you notice your eyelids seem to be getting heavier and heavier. With this, you place the bookmark back into the book. Place the closed book on the table in front of you. And to the gentle rocking of the train and the clickety-clack on the track, you close your eyes, take a deep breath, comfortable breaths, and allow yourself to drift deeper into that pleasant reverie about the hobbit's journey. And as you drift into that reverie, you can have a sense of relaxing your mind and body. You focus on the top of your head, noticing what your head is resting on. How it's supported gently in place. The comfort in and around your head resting there. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head. Softening and relaxing. Drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take. Before moving your awareness around to your face, focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks, having the muscles in these areas soften and relax, relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. while the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax deeper and deeper. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension or perhaps find that tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. And you continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth. Relaxing your lips and your jaw. Relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck. Around to the back of your neck. And around your throat. And as your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to 
move down to your shoulders and upper back. And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders. As that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest, softening and relaxing those muscles fully deeply and comfortably. And as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there, that relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way to the tips of your fingers. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom, before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind begins to relax. You begin to have a sense of a healing light touching your forehead enveloping your face and head with healing, deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take, filling you with healing, peace and calm, spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body, breathing in healing, calm relaxation, and breathing out any stress or tension. Aware of that healing light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders, around the back of your neck and down into your arms, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way to the tips of the fingers. And with another in-breath, the healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body, filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation. As the light 
journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet, filling your whole body with that healing, restorative light. And as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper into a reverie, imagining yourself waking as a hobbit in the forest, looking around in awe at the scale of the trees the sounds of the birds and rustling leaves, as the wind blows a breeze, the dancing rays of light breaking through the canopy overhead, the sounds of each footstep as you walk along a muddy path, eventually finding yourself at a wide river where you work together with the others to create a raft before all boarding that raft to cross the river. Crossing the river, you can feel the movement of the raft on the water and somewhere deep in your subconscious, you wonder whether this is your brain incorporating the movement of the train into your inner reverie. While crossing the river, you can feel the occasional spray of water up into your face as waves slap the raft. On the far side of the river, you navigate the raft up onto the shore, disembark, and continue your journey back into the darkness of the forest. After trekking through the forest all day, you finally come to a clearing overlooking a valley. You decide that this is a great place to settle down for the night. You pitch tents, light campfires, enjoy some food before going to bed in the tent and drifting comfortably and deeply asleep. While you drift deeply asleep in your reverie, a slight jolt on the train gives you a sensation almost like a hypnagogic jerk, that sudden jolt or feeling of falling which often precedes the moment you fully and deeply fall asleep. You find yourself waking so gently and relaxed on the train, gazing out of the window and seeing that the countryside is still passing by, but you can now see hints of a pine forest off in the distance. As the train approaches the pine forest, you can see the mountains towering in the distance beyond the forest. The train followed the curve of the track towards and into the forest. Entering the forest, the light dims comfortably. The trees are well spaced so you can see deep into the forest, yet the branches let little direct light penetrate. You can see shafts of light dotted through the scene and some areas where trees have fallen, making the ground in those locations so much brighter than the surrounding forest that it seems to almost glow with brightness.
you catch the occasional glimpse of deer in the forest, and wonder what other animals are out there which you can't see from the train. Lining the track are dense clumps of grasses and bushes and dappled light and shadows dancing on the train windows and the small clearing near the track. Although beautiful, the passing view of the forest quickly becomes repetitive. Everything is passing so fast that, although the background moves past slowly, it is obscured by the repeating rows of trees in the foreground, and unlike when travelling through the countryside, there is little to scan with interest. In the countryside you are able to see animals and could sometimes spend thirty seconds or so watching the animals before they passed out of view. Or you could see a small village in the distance, the spire of a small church in that village, standing out against the backdrop of nature. You could watch that village in the distance for a minute or two before it would pass by. You could see the clouds gently moving across the sky, gradually changing shapes, sometimes taking on shapes and patterns of familiar objects. Yet, here in the forest, most of the time, all you can see is passing tree trunks, the occasional patch of light, and sometimes deer nestled among the trees. You imagine that this forest would be so calming and peaceful to be walking through, where you can really take your time to be absorbed in the experience, rather than having the experience flash by. Where you could stop and quietly watch the deer, or perhaps notice an owl in a tree to silently observe. Where you could hear the rustling of the branches overhead. You could walk between the shade of the forest and the bright clearings and feel the warmth of the sun on your skin as you make that transition. As the train continues to travel through the forest, so it begins to approach the foot of the mountains, where it will pass through a tunnel. The tunnel is long and quickly becomes almost pitch black. As the train enters the tunnel, you notice the sound change slightly, and within seconds the compartment is plunged into darkness with just the soft glow of one of the corner lights illuminating where you sit. You know that you'll be passing through this tunnel for a while. Looking out of the window, you can only see black. You can't see any shapes or light, just the faint reflection of yourself and the compartment in the window. So you take a moment to rest back, close your eyes and relax. You imagine yourself standing at the top of twenty steps. You look around you and decide to descend those steps, stepping onto step twenty, then nineteen, down to eighteen. And seventeen, becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the experience with each step, stepping on to step sixteen and fifteen, then lowering down to step fourteen, slowly, carefully, softly descending. Stepping onto step 
13, 12, 11, going all the way deeper and deeper, noticing the way you feel deeper, absorbed, and more relaxed with each step that you take. Stepping onto step 10, 9, 8, slowly, deeper, and deeper absorbed in the experience. 7, 6, 5, relaxing so peacefully and comfortably, stepping onto step 4, 3, 2, and then stepping off of the bottom step, 1, where you find yourself walking into a room of nothingness, a dark room which brings deep comfort, relaxation and stillness to your mind and body. You relax quietly and deeply for a while in this room of nothingness, enjoying the peace and calm and the gentle movement of the train on the track, drifting, floating, relaxing, deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper into this room of nothingness. And in this room of nothingness, time seems to stand still. You lose awareness of how much time is passing unaware whether a long time is passing but feeling like a short amount of time or whether maybe just a moment is passing but feeling like a long time. You have no awareness of up or down, back or forth, left or right, just here, now. And after some time, you notice a glow through your closed eyelids, intruding on your room of nothingness, and realize the train must now be exiting the tunnel. As you open your eyes, you notice how different the scenery is outside the train here on the other side of the mountain range with the winter wonderland look to it. The train begins to curve right, pulling along the side of the mountains and revealing a beautiful, snowy, glistening vista. The train is travelling on a track part way up the mountain, giving a great view over the scenery. As the train moves, so the sun's light makes the snowy landscape sparkle, like it's coated with a million diamonds. Most of the trees and bushes look bulbous, caked in snow, with just the occasional tree with visible brown branches piercing the otherwise perfect white. Even the blue sky seems whiter and lighter, hanging over the snow-covered land. 
Most of the landscape seems so smooth. You imagine what it would be like to be walking through all of this untouched virgin snow. The cracking and compacting sound each footstep would make. What it would feel like to be breathing in that cool air. The feeling of the cool air on your cheeks. In comparing that thought with being warm and comfortable here in this compartment on this train. As you continue to look out of the window, you occasionally notice animals and their tracks in the snow. It's been many hours since you set off on this journey, and the sun is creeping down to the horizon. As it does, you can see the way this white landscape is becoming tinged with oranges. You can see a wide river cutting through the snowy landscape, beginning to almost glow like a river of lava as light from the setting sun radiates across the water. You can see the approaching dark blue of the night sky and the first hints of starlight. You take this moment to set up your bed for the night. You clear everything out of the way of the seats and table. Place the table into its lower position between the two seats. Fold out the seats across the table to make the mattress. Get sheets from one of the cupboards. Make the bed. Add the pillows to the bed. Make yourself a drink and then settle down on the bed with your book. You read the book a little longer and drink your relaxing drink while the sun continues to dip comfortably below the horizon. Becoming so absorbed in the book that you don't realise how much time has passed. And when you look up from your book, everything outside is dark. You can just see the glow of the lights from windows on the train dancing along the faint snow along the edge of the track. Beyond this, the scene is too dark to see. So you turn off the light in your compartment to reduce the reflection in the window. And within a few seconds, your Eyes begin to adapt to the dark, and you can see the most incredible carpet of stars splashed across the night sky. More impressive than any night sky you've seen with your own eyes before. You find yourself almost mesmerized by the view, before feeling increasingly tired. So you turn the small light on again. Draw the curtains and read some more of your book. To the point where your eyes blinking for longer than a blink. Sometimes without you realising they had only half blinked and you were sat there in bed with your eyes closed. At this point, you decide to place your bookmark back into the book, settle down and drift comfortably asleep. As you begin to easily and effortlessly, honestly and fully drift comfortably asleep, you find yourself drifting deeper and deeper asleep, drifting and floating, Deeply relaxed, asleep 
into slumberland.